What's happening, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Friday Night Pint, where we talk about all the latest goings on with West Ham. Uh, with the lads, I'm here with Scott and a very tired Nicky. I'm, I'm assured Ryan will be joining us shortly. We've got a lot to talk about today. We have seemed to have got a signing over the line, although I ain't seen him with the shirt, but it seems like we got it done. And a signing we missed out on. We'll talk a bit about Anana and some other bits and pieces and, and answering your questions. So, first of all, I mean, I don't need to ask how you are, Nick. It's quite clear to see in your face. <laughs> Tired, isn't it? Yeah. It's been yeah. working hard. You're, you're looking very energised, Scott, on in, in, in the opposite side of things. You're looking very... I know, I'm just, I'm, years of practice of covering the tiredness, mate. That's all that is. Easy, easy fuck. I, I, I've known him for too many years. He's more tired than I am. <laughs> Listen, That's it, mate. I just, I just hide it well. Two kids like at home now, two youngsters. Little yep. babies, he's he's mastering it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, yeah, it's been a bit of a a crazy week, isn't it? With 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 uh, if you've been following the West Ham news and the transfers, I've been tr- I usually try to avoid it, but as I as happens, I get sucked in this week. We was on the edge, thinking we was going to get one player, and then out of the blue, almost like that, we seem to have signed up. Maxwell Cornet, <coughs> he's completed his medical and he's been doing his uh, media announcement video. How are we feeling about that? I'm quite excited. Yeah, it's all out on West Ham. It's all confirmed. Um, How is it? I haven't even. Yeah, heard. yeah. It, it got, it got, it dropped, up, dropped about 25 minutes ago. Um, so it's all done. It's, it's, it's a done deal. I think once the manager starts saying that he's in the building and all of that sort of thing, I don't think there's any doubt about it. You know, it's yeah, it's just a, a case of ticking the boxes, crossing the eyes, and all that sort of thing. So, um, I think it's a good signing. I really do. It is a uh, is something that we desperately need, and that's pace and power, rawness on, on the wing. And we that's that. You know, we've been lacking that for a long time. I, I, I want to get another one like that. To be honest with you, another another player like that because um, <clears throat> I just think it's something that we've desperately lacked. I think that's the only thing that we've lacked over the last couple of years is that. He's someone to break away. He's he's come with good, um, you know. The, the Burnley fans love him, and and you know he's come with like well wishes from them. They really didn't want to lose him, so it just goes to show that he is a. Although they were a, a poor team last year, he's a good signing. He's a good signing, and I'll be honest with you. Like when you look at him, uh, and you know, I know he was in for Kostic as well. I think Kostic at the moment is the better player. But again, I, he doesn't add too much pace, you know. And and we've we've got players like that. We've got Bowen, you know, uh, Antonio now <laughs> that can play on the wing that that you know that can provide the same sort of thing that Kostic does. I think Kostic is a wonderful player, but you know that you've got to fill in the gaps uh, of what you haven't got. You've got to fill in attributes of what you haven't got, and and we haven't got any any pace, and and, and he fits that perfectly. I think he'll do really well for us. Uh, in, in, but in terms of Onana, um, it doesn't look like he's he, he's coming. <clears throat> Weird situation that we'll, we'll talk about. It. I'll let everyone else have a little say on Courtney first. I know you're jumping the gun there, jumping, uh, jumping. I know, into I know. But um, I know <laughs> somebody told me he took the number ninety nine shirt. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I know technically a ninety nine isn't. Oh yeah, is, would you say it's a Cornet? But. Um, yeah, no, the thing is with him, I think when I look at um, Corner, I was, and you, you see how he plays, I think it's a good alternative to Lingard. I think he can do a lot of the similar role of what Lingard does, the directness, the, 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 way, the way the runs he can make with the ball. But he's more versatile. He can play left back, although, again, it's another sort of attacking left back. He can play up front. But obviously, his, his best position is on that left wing where Lingard would have played. Um, and to score nine goals in that Burnley side in like 30 odd appearances is is brilliant, you know. And, and imagine what he can do in our team with some of the, the players that he's going to be playing with, and you know, just, just the, his ability on the ball and, and having a player of that quality you can take people on. Um, I think he's going to bring a lot to the team, and, and I think it is a good, a good alternative to Lingard. And in hindsight, I think we'll look back on it and, and actually be glad we didn't get Lingard because we got Cornet. I think that's pretty much how, how I see it. So, yeah, you know, buzzing for it. And a few clubs were involved. Newcastle, Everton were were in for him. They were looking at him. 
Um, but we got this one over the line out of the blue. We offered we offered 17 mil at first. I think we didn't want to pay the release clause because we didn't want to pay the full whack up front. So we, we offered 500 grand short of the release clause. They weren't having it. Everton was sniffing around and we went, nah, all right, let's just fucking pay the release clause. And we got it yeah, done, it, thankfully. That's, that's the thing, though. We should, have, we should have paid the release clause from the start. That he's, he's a good player. Like you said, scored nine goals in a very, very poor Burnley side last season. How many dare um, top scorer get? Uh, what like we, 12 we or had two, three with double figures in the end. I think it worked yeah, out, but you know, and like that, or something. yeah, that, that just goes to show, you know, it's, it's, it's a smart signing for me. It's a place we wanted to improve. Like you said, Nick, it's, it's, it's more pace. Um, when, when you read it, it's like, well, where does he play? Left wing, left back, left mid, left, you know, so many positions that he can um, fill in, but like we need him in an attacking presence. You know, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's a versatile player with yeah. pace, and he? he's a bit like Antonio. You know, yeah. he can play all over the. And uh, yeah, I'm excited by him. And as Dan said, you know, I, I wanted Lingard to sign, but we've moved on from that. And I think that maybe it was a blessing in disguise that that Lingard deal didn't happen. Happen because I think that looking at it, we've probably got the better player. And when I say better player, I mean he's younger. You know, I think he's going to add a lot more to our team. Uh, and I, 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 from what I've seen, I've just seen the videos uh, before I come on. Um, yeah, I'm excited by him. I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing him play. You know, yeah. I don't think he was registered in time to play against City, but he'll be ready to go next week against Nottingham Forest up against Jesse Lingard. So oh. let the battle commence. Yeah, no, I, th- I think I think I think you are right, mate. I think it had to be by lunchtime to make him available for the weekend fixtures, obviously because because of the Friday night fixture as well. Um, yeah. So, you know, he ain't, he ain't going to come in for that one. So, but like you said, up and raring to go for the Forest game. He's obviously had a pre-season with Burnley as well. So, he yeah, should be fit. It's funny because Newcastle was sniffing around him and Newcastle didn't want to pay the 17.5 million. But last year, they was going to sign Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo, <laughs> fucking... Saudi Arabia and, and all that. And they don't look like they, they are signing all these. So um, the good thing is that but all I've seen is positive from Burnley fans and positive in a way that they wish him well and they're happy that he's joined, they're joining the, he's joining the club like West Ham. Um, and I think, as you said, they got relegated last season. It wasn't great, but he'd done well. And it shows how well he actually did in that team that the fans took to him like that because he was only there for a season. And they're gutted to see him go. And uh, listen, he's but he's in, he stays in Claret and Blue, but he's just in the better Claret and Blue now. Mm-hmm. It, it, exactly. Um, so now just read this out. Who, who put that? Do you want to read that out? Yeah, yeah, me too, because it's super chat. Uh, John Carr, 449. Great to see you lads back. Feeling positive about this season. And yes. Cheers, nice mate. nice to have a bit of positive yeah. news. I mean, looking at him into the team, I mean, the, the prospects of having... You know, Corne on uh, on the left and Bowen on the right, and then you have you know Antonio or, or Skamaka up front. Uh, you know, on the counter attack, I think will be deadly. Um, yeah. You know, so that for and, and to me, I feel like he goes straight in the side. I really think he's that good. I can I can really see him being that quality to start. And everyone knows I, I like Ben Rama. I personally prefer Ben Rama in the middle, uh, but you've got four nows there as well. I think. This is the thing. When I look at Fornals, Ben Rama and Lanzini, they're almost not quite a central player, but not quite a winger. They're like this weird in-between thing that don't work out. Where I think where you've got like Cornet, he is like clearly a left winger, but can also play up for I think it's just him there. I think he's really going to make that position his own. But we've got that depth with the other players. And then it's I just don't, about who plays in the middle. I don't think he'll go straight in because I think with David Moyes, and this is a frustrating thing with Moyes sometimes, but I do understand is he, he likes to show a little bit of loyalty to some players. But it won't be long before he's starting week in, week out for us, without a doubt. And yeah. to have him on the bench against City, and I don't care what David Moyes said today, Skamaka will be on the bench on Sunday against City. There's no way he can leave him out even if he's on the bench, whether he gets 10, 15 minutes or whatever, to have them two on the bench will give the fans a boost. It will give the place a boost and it give the players on the pitch a boost as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what the funny thing, there was another thing, one of these, I see one of these Burnley fans and he praised him to the hills 
but he said he's injury prone. So I was, let me have a look at this. I thought, let me check this out. He missed thir- two games with injury for Burnley and was injured for 13, uh, 13 days in total. Um, <laughs> so I put that to him, which is a bit bizarre. And then, like, you know, before that with Leon, um, you know, he had the odd injury here and there. But when you look at his career, you, he's not a player that you would call injury. We've seen injury prone at this club, you know, and he's nowhere near what I would call injury prone. Um, so let's let's touch wood. You know, that, don't, that curse don't come. But um, yeah, I, I personally, I, I don't want to see him left back unless in case of emergency, because defending isn't his strong suit. You know, he's an attacker. We do need a left back. So I'm hoping it's not like we've got him. So it's going to be him and Creswell. We're going to sometimes play him on the left. Maybe play Ben Rama there. Play, well, I think now. the good thing is as well is obviously we brought Skamaka in and and now Kone and they're two positions that Antonio can play in. So now it, he's got to wrap his game because he might not be starting for us once them two hit a bit of form. So it's good because and so we know Antonio's got got the talent there and we know what he can do. Um, he had no competition last season. Uh, and he was he was shattered by the end of the season, like most of the players were. But now there's a little bit of competition in there. And I know David Moyes said in his press conference earlier that he wants to add more players, which is good to hear. We've got until the end of August. But the start of the season, do I think we're stronger? I think, yeah, I think starting 11 is a bit stronger now. Once mm, it's the funny thing fit. is, the yeah. starting 11 for yeah. the for the Man City game will be the same starting 11 as the Brighton game, mm. funnily enough. But I we've think bought, once, yeah, like you said, once we get the players in, the starting yeah, 11... We've brought in, we've brought in six that. players, but we've lost four. So, yeah. really, we're only two players better off. So, well, what has he said in the, in the press conference today? He, he was having a press conference today about the um, the game on Saturday, uh, Sunday. And um, <clears throat> he, um, they, he got asked about Cornet and he said, yeah, um, he's in the building now with blah, blah, blah. And he went on about signings. He said, we've still got some work to do yet. He said, we've still got signings to come in yet. He said, hopefully we're not finished. Um, we've still got to strengthen in some areas. We lost a lot of players last year. So they're aw- he's aware and he's, yeah. he's he's acknowledged it. So there's still stuff to be done. I don't think... Like when you look at the Onana deal, yeah, um, sometimes sometimes it happens, you know, with the, with a with a player. Like he just just don't fancy it. He just he wanted too much money. He's a, he's a young kid. Wanted too much money off the bat. Um, and now wants to go to Everton. Let, let him go to Everton. The thing is, but sometimes man, it ain't even about money. It's about who he's going to be working under. Yeah, and the thing is with Onana, for a midfield player like Onana, having Frank Lampard as someone who can teach you about playing in midfield is, is, is a swear. Onana yeah. was about money. Without a doubt, it's about money. Yeah, I think it's about money. money. He's 20 years old. He was on five grand a week at wherever he was, Lil. You know, and now he's demanding hundred grand a week. Who does he think he is? He only played eleven games last season. What's he? Yeah. Is he demanding that sort of money? I'd rather. I don't want players like that at the football club. You know, when you've got someone like Declan Rice that'd be on less money than him, and he's twenty yeah. years old, demanding this, that, and the other. Let him go to Everton. Let him struggle. You know, good luck, good luck is, to him at Everton. When I look at it, and I completely understand Moyes' reservations about spending that sort of money, you know, on on the site transfer fee and the wages, because I think it would have been an exciting sort of one for the future and that and a prospect. But really, when you look at it, I spending thirty odd mil on this player who's unproven, very young, and then giving him the big wages when really that money could be spent on positions that we need more. Yeah, we need depth in that in that uh, central midfield. But now we've got, obviously, Flynn Downs there. We can find cheaper options there. And if, if we eventually do sell Rice, which, you know, we don't want to get into, but we can find a lot, we can put that money on a lot better options. So, yeah, I think it's a risk. He could go on to be brilliant, but let's look. We know what we need. We need a left back, without a doubt. Um, I, and then I, think it's, I think it's back. smart business from West Ham anyway because we get Onana on a re- relegation release clause next season for cheap. <laughs> <and we'll get laughs> yeah. <go> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I can see what Nicky's saying about like you get, to, and, and that's what I, I was saying. It's probably what, a, a thing that can help sway it is oh, it's Lampard and he played in my position. He was brilliant, but at the same time, he's not a very good manager. He's not shown to himself to be a very good manager. So while he could give you some tips as a player. The likelihood is you're going to be in a relegation scrap because he's not that good of manager. Um, Unfortunately, mate, when it comes to people like that, they're not worried about what the team sort of position the team's in. They're worried about their own game. 
Yeah. You know, if you go, if you're 20 years old, you play 11 times for whoever the fuck he's playing for. Um, and he, um, <clears throat> he's now demanding, uh, somebody said 130 grand a week. It was his wow. sister. And, and it's, it's like, you know, that's, that's crazy money, crazy, crazy money. Um, but if you, all of a sudden, if you're demanding that sort of money, but, but then again, this, I think this is a problem. This is the problem for the Premier League because we've become such a huge, um, what's the word? Bastards. We've become such a huge draw at the Premier League and the draw is the money. You know, they're, they're always going on about how much money the Premier League are making, how much money these clubs are making, how much these television deals are worth and all that sort of thing. And as soon as this is, this is why it's a lot of the, do you think some kid from the Ivory Coast wants to play in the Premier League? He don't give a shit where he's playing. He don't give, he don't, he don't give a fuck where he's playing. It's just that you hear Premier League, you hear money. That's it. Any player in the world who's got ambition, they want to play in the Premier League because it's the best league in the world. It's the most competitive league in the world. It's the toughest league in the world. Um, but it, it's just it's just like Jesse Lingard. It's all about money. That's all the, most of these players care about now is money. You know, as I said, he was on five grand a week at Lille. Even if he'd have come to West Ham on 15 grand a week, it would have been a lot better off. But we would have probably offered him a decent wage. Like I can imagine it being around 50, 60 grand a week, something like that. That's still good money for a 20-year-old, you know, who's going to play in a club that's challenging for the top six in a stadium that's just been, um, the capacity's gone up. So there'll be full crowds every week, loyal fans. But they, look, they don't want to know. They just want to go and play for Everton 130 grand a week because he thinks his career is going to end next week. Uh, Everton have obviously haven't learned their lesson either with how they do transfers and how they spend money. Um, you know, well, they're, they're, they're in trouble. Yeah. So they get, they get investigated by the financial fair. But they, they might not even be able to afford it. That's the thing. I'm, 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 I'm proud, I'm proud of West Ham this summer. That they've stood their ground on things like Jesse Lingard and Onana. They're not just going to pay over the top because they know that it's going to upset certain players. And that mm -hmm. certain player would be someone like Declan Rice, who we all know deserves a lot more money. But you don't see him coming out demanding this, that and the other. Just gets his head down. You see all the videos going around, you know, of him having a laugh in the training ground. He seems happy. And that's how you want players to be. It's not always yeah. about money. But some players just care about the, the readies, unfortunately. Yeah. You know what I was saying on, on Twitter? One of the big things I'm grateful for we ain't signing him is I ain't going to have to hear that fucking god-awful Rihanna chant people was trying oh, to get nah, on Twitter. Nah. Oh, my God. <laughs> then I would have sung a different one. I would have sang, oh, na, 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 na. Oh, na, 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 na. Oh, yeah, That's nah, better. Nah, nah, nah. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't Rihanna see that much right. one in the way in, mate. <laughs> fucking awful. That, that's, that's Should we get some like comments real quick before we carry yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, I'll we start some, but... Because I know you've starred, like... 20. 20. Yeah, no, because so I, I know, like, we because we, of the people have had their say on the old Cornet sign and stuff all before yeah. we. Well, just, just as you guys were saying, it's like that is the thing. A player like him demanding what he was demanding is just ridiculous, you know. So, um, yeah. that's one of these. But yeah, you're going through and make them. So, I just, yeah, get people just their thoughts. Let's hope these signings prove their worth. We always spend dough and it never materializes. Yeah, I, I think this is, you know, hopefully we're in the new. The new West Ham. Uh, great news. Can't wait to watch him. Um, where are you going? You jumped. Where'd that come no, from? No, that wasn't me, mate. No, oh, I didn't sorry. touch that one. No, but all oh, right. Okay, I see. That's on the live thing. Sorry, I, I was just looking because I didn't see it on the star one. Um, mad that Everton haven't got a fit striker. Calvin, yeah, this is a good point. Calvin yeah. been out for weeks and they're buying injured. 20-year-old, fuck's sake, Lampard won't see September. Yeah, like, 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 like Calvert Lewin is literally just got injured in the minimum six weeks. Yeah. Fucking he's mad. always injured. Yeah, well, yeah he's, he is. That's the thing. Since last season, he's really, really struggled with injury. So That's why I thought we'd sign him. He's an, perfect. Another, another one is dodged by us. Um, uh, Matt says, say "Can't lie." Like, the window's still open, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Matt says, "Can't lie." New training gear is pucker. Matt Powell says, "Apparently, we want to get another Ivory Coast player now from Fire Nord, who's a DM." 
Um, never happening, but Tillemans is on a free, isn't he? If we got him and a new left back, that would be I'll tell you what, if, if, we, if we somehow pulled that off, I think this would be the perfect best transfer window <laughs> I've ever seen. Oh, in your yeah, life. yeah, yeah. I can't. We, this is the thing, we would have to pay him, but we'd have to be I the club. I think, pay him I think him Arsenal, were, Arsenal are sniffing about him as well, but, so we're yeah, probably in a few clubs, I think. But the thing is, at least, at least you're paying him, he's a bit more proven. Yeah, you don't mind giving someone in a bit of money because you know yeah. he's a proven Premier League player. Yeah, who's good. Yeah. Um, hope he isn't used at left back so much to offer going forward with his finishing. Him and Bowen either side would be great. Yeah, uh, absolutely, hundred percent agree. Uh, Deepak said that. Uh, Mark says he's also good yes. on dead ball situation. Good free kicks in him. Which, which Moyes was actually that was one of his main things he was looking for. Someone mm. to come in and, and do the free kick. Someone who's good at that. So, well, we, we need someone because we've only really got Creswell and Ben Rama. Um, yeah. and Anna's sister, uh, who is his agent, wanted 130,000 a week. To That's be fair, mate, nice. to be fair, to be fair, if she can play left back, I'd have paid that. We've got her <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, Heather can add on that. Anna, I think his attitude is wrong for us. Nine goals and four assists in that Burnley team is a good return. Very good. Bobby Guy says five subs looking better for us all of a sudden. We were saying that before, you know. Having, more in. Yeah, having having the mix up, you know, having players on the bench that can change a game. Steven says, anyone heard about the train strikes on the 18th? If it's true, it's going to be a nightmare. I think the train strikes are on the 19th. That's what I've heard. Um so see. traveling by train. Max will be will be a sensation. Watch him go. Um, we're a quality left back away from an eight slash uh, eight or nine out of ten transfer winner, in my opinion. James mm -hmm. Lee's donated four forty nine. Cheers, mate. Friday night, another Simon Premier's back. Cheers, lads. Come on, you irons. Gary Lucas, we haven't gone. For, why have, we haven't? Why haven't we gone for Madison? I think, I think that's what, yeah. he won't. He wouldn't come to West Ham. No, Moyes did the right thing. Moyes is sticking to the club's wage structure. Uh, Amos Mickey is uh, glad we know we've got Arana and Anna recovering from a knee ligament injury would be an expensive risk. We know the club has cursed luck with injuries, so in my opinion, bullet dodged. Uh, Everton won't be able to afford him with the FFP and high hammers. Claret here got yourself an absolute bargain at 17.5 million for Cornet, and I think that says a lot when, when you see clubs who, who you're signing a player from. Um, like especially the Premier League side, you know, he, he was in the Premier League side last season, but that's two players we've signed now this season where um, the fans of the teams that are leaving are gutted that they're going. It's not that, Scott. You know yourself, like, no one ever wants to see their best players leave a club, but when you get relegated, unfortunately, it happens. And as I said, Burnley fans have been unbelievable from what I've seen on Twitter, like, wishing him well. Uh, glad that he's coming to a club like West Ham. And even the West Ham fans, the posit positivity on, on Twitter today, like I've not seen one negative comment about him coming to West Ham. No one's, too, you know, usually you get the odd people go, ah, he's not good enough, we need to go better. Everyone's been excited by this signing. And I'm looking forward to seeing him a West Ham shirt. As I said, look, he stays in Claret and Blue, but this time it's the West Ham Claret and Blue. It, yeah, you know, exactly. And um, nah, yeah, yeah, buzzing for that. So, so when I look at because that was a position I think we definitely need to strengthen, but apart from left back, really, and obviously they're looking at a center back now because of uh Aguard being injured. We're being looking at Connor Cody, in they? Well, that quite funny that I just started a comment now. Um, okay. might as well pull it up. Any thoughts on today's new Connor Cody is available? I'd love him. I'd love him at West Ham. And to, for me, it'd be a starter. Mm. It'd be him and Zuma together. Honestly, Connor Cody is a very underrated centre-back. I like mm. him. He's done well for Wolves. I'm surprised that Wolves are going to let him go. You know, he's yeah. an England national. So I'd love to see him at West Ham. You know, if we could pull that signing off, you know, as much as we're as excited about a, a guard coming in, I'd be more excited about Connor Cody, if I'm honest. I, I think he's a brilliant defender. I really do. It seems like so. It seems to me what I'm reading is the player wants to leave the club. He was linked with uh, Liverpool not long ago because he, he's a scouser, yeah. isn't he? So, 
I mean, if we could get him in, that would be like this. This transfer window would just be maybe too much for me. Honestly, <laughs> what? Uh, but that's see, mm-hmm. this is um, sorry, I'm wrong one. This it's like uh, the LAO on loan will be an option with an option to buy. Would love Cody, but he's the Wolves captain. The thing is, if he wants out of the club again. That type of player, you're bringing another leader into the dressing room. You're bringing another leader into the starting eleven. You know, and we've seen with with what Dawson brought to the side when he came in. You know, as much as a lot of us criticised the signing of him, he brought in that leader mentality. You know, and and as we said before, you need that as much over the pitch as possible. So it'd be good to good to get him in. Well, the, the thing is with him, from looking at it, you know, he's he's right footed. I think you'd be competing with Zuma Zuma. and Dawson rather than we sort of need competition, I think, on that left centre-back side because, obviously, Ogbonna's nowhere near ready. We don't know what shape he's going to be in this season. Agued is probably a good few months away from fitness. Mm. Um, So, I mean, look, we obviously played last season without a left-sided centre-back. So, look, if we got him, we would maybe just... Put him in there, so you know, even though it's not ideal, you can't could, turn that player down. I think we we spoke a bit about this last week, but I can see maybe David Moyes playing more of a back three this season, and that's why we've got in uh Cornet to play left wing back. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. I think you might see Creswell playing as a third centre back alongside Zuma and Dawson or <laughs> Red when he's fit. I, 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 can, I can see that happening. I really oh, can. That's where that's where Sean's comment slips right in perfectly there, yeah, no. right? You know, if we get Cody, he'd be straight one, uh, go straight once Aguerd is back, back three of Zuma, Aguerd and Cody. So you know, you know, in well, that's that's just, it. I would rather see that back three than um yeah. although you probably have Cody either in the middle on, on the right, wouldn't you? And then you have Aguerd Yeah, Aguerd would be the left centre back, Cody in the middle and Zuma on the right, or Cody and yeah. Zuma can I'd rather that than Creswell. Uh, even though he's done a job there before, I just think we need to as Graham always says, not do the square pegs round holes, you know. The thing can't is, put, can't put fourth place in the trophy cap. <laughs> <laughs> the, th- the thing is, as well, though, I think um, with a bit of um, help, Creswell looks better at that left centre back position. Yeah, he's done well there. He's done well there when he's been asked to play there. He's never sort of. I wouldn't say let us down because he got sent off a couple of times, but he's never really let us down, especially when he's had to play as a free centre back. Yeah, as a third centre back, and I think he done well there for uh, David Moyes. And the thing, the thing is, he's putting the right left winger with him. You know, that, that's that's half the problem. Half the time is that he does need that support on that left side because he is, is why maybe we put Corne in. Because he is that sort of player who's going to work back and help mm. him out. So yeah, he's just not that good at defending, though. That's the problem. Um, Please, he's, he's he's going to be a massive upgrade on Masawa. <laughs> Fuck me, that no, that's is not awesome. saying much. I mean, I love Masawa. You know, I wish him all the best, but defending, you know, it was it was not a it was a myth for him. Um, the best thing he ever done for us, Masuaku, with all due respect, because uh, there was times when I, I thought he was excited. Is that little skill he done at Tottenham that time? Do you remember? Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was that's what I'm saying. Good. When you think of Masawaku moments, it's that the goal against Chelsea, and probably do you remember that goal he scored in the League Cup against Shrewsbury or something like whoever it was against? Yeah. Can't even remember it was against. He scored that screamer, Bolton, Bolton. Yeah. Bolton, Bolton. Yeah, he, yeah. he's had. I've, I've, I've never. Uh, look, people know my feelings on Masawaku. I never hated him. You know, I've always wanted him to do well. He just, I just didn't. Rating that much as, as some people do, but yeah, you get that. I, I rate players that some people don't. That some people don't rate. So it, it's it's football. Yeah, yeah. I wish him well. Luck. Never wish him bad luck. You know, good luck to him in Turkey. I'm sure he'll, he'll thrive out there because it's it's not a great league. No, I think that's that's that they've um, they're talking about four players. I think that they've identified. I think more. I don't know if it was Moyes said it or one of these ITA TKs. They're looking around at least like sort. Four players. So position wise, I'm thinking clearly they want another centre midfielder. Of it, left back, absolute priority. Centre back we've identified. To me, the position that no one's really talking about strengthening is is uh, right wing. I think we need more depth in as a as a clear out and out but, but right winger behind Bowen. Then do we really need that? You know, you've got Bowen, you've got Antonio, you've got Sufel. Sufel was the right winger. 
yeah, but again, it's not it, it, it's not <coughs> ideal, is it? And I think the thing is, sometimes when you do that, one injury or two injuries can derail everything because yeah, but but when 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 you look at that, you've got the options there. You know, if you want to go, if you want to have a defensive right winger with a bit of pace to get it forward, you've got Sufal. You want to go more attacking, you, you've got a more pace, you've got Antonio or Bowen. You know, the, the, the options are there with the players that we've got in. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's deciding what Moyes wants to do, you know. You know, you, when, when you look at that, the, the three at the back, you either play a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2. Now we're getting players that we can play to up front. You've got the likes of Bowen that can support Samaka. You've got Antonio who can play up there alongside him. You know, then you've got the options on the right. The options on the left are probably a little bit weaker. If you're going for a defensive... 3-5-2, right? You've got Corne coming in, who's, who's probably a bit more defensive than what Ben Rama is. And then you've probably got four nails who can play out there. Personally, I don't like four nails as a left winger. You know? But, again, you've got different options. I, I, I think I can only really see us playing that back five against the top teams, you know, which is what we've done in the past. The Man Cities, the Chelsea's, the Liverpool's, etc. I can't see it being something we roll out every game and we're playing against like um, the Brightons or the um, Fulhams and that, us playing a back five. I think it'll be one of them, like, where we're playing against some tough opposition. It'll, it'll, it'll work yeah. that out. But yeah, um, I think that's like any game, though. You just take it game by game. You, when you come up against, like, the likes of City, you know you're not going to have the ball. You know they're going to have 65%, 70, 70% possession of the ball. And that's what you have to deal with. But we done well against the top four teams last season. You know, we've done well against them. It's, yeah. the, it's the teams that are around us and, and below us that we seem to struggle against. So it's, that's where we yeah. need to mix it up a little bit more. It's the teams that play the way we play against the likes of yeah. City, Liverpool, Chelsea. We, we, haven't had, we, we, we can't break them down. That's no. our problem. You know what, actually, changing what I said, actually, backtracking about that right winger, actually, pro more so a proper attacking midfielder. And which is obviously with Zelinsky in that we've been we've been linked to it, we've been looking for. But if we could get someone who can play behind the striker, who can create chances, you know. See, I think I think them. that we've actually got someone at the club already that can do that, but he's not been given a chance, and that's Ben Rama. Yeah, I think I that, think Ben Rama he can play behind the forward. I think mm -hmm. he's better central. I really do. But he's not right. been given that chance. He's always been put out on the wing. Give mm -hmm. him a chance. Bit like what Lanzini can do, but obviously Ben Rahm is younger than Lanzini. I think give him that chance. I think he can be that player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I agree with that. The thing is, is, is Lanzini still got? I don't, for me, Lanzini. I like Lanzini playing in that sort of attacking midfield role, but he drops too deep sometimes. And and when you've got players like Rice and that who pick up the ball in deep positions, it's sort of they all get in each other's way. So it would be good to have more of a positive player that that gets in and around the striker a bit more because again you know with the likes of Lanzini he doesn't do the Kevin Nolan number 10. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't he get in and around the, the striker. quite easy as well you know because yeah. he's so small. Yeah but it's it's it's, it's also that the, the players that we signing give us options. As we said you've got you've got the option there where um you you can get players so I'm just blocking someone. Um, you can get players, as we well, said, you can play them. with two up front. I see you may have already blocked them, right? Um, I don't even see anything. Oh, no, it just popped up. Miss Hammerett may have already done it. But, you know, it's just having that options that if we need to go two up top, we've got the options there. Yeah. And and that's what I feel we have now got with Sumaka, with Antonio, with Bowen. We've got players that can play as a two strike force. You know, that's something that we need. Yeah. I, th I think I think we've got some exciting players at the football club. It's just getting them right. Just getting that right yeah. connection. You know, am I happy with a back four? I still think we need to strengthen. Definitely at left back. As much as I like Creswell and he's been a great servant, we, he needs competition. Needs, and we need someone that can start in front of him. We need another centre-back as cover. I mean, Dan mentioned it. I've seen a couple of people mention it in the chat about Phil Jones. You know, people laugh. I take Phil Jones because yeah. I think that he he's 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 an okay defender, and I think that Moyes could probably get the best out of him. Now we all laughed at Dawson, but I think 
someone like Phil Jones on loan wouldn't be a bad move. Obviously, I would probably get yeah. Kobe. Well, but... well, the thing is as well, I think another thing we don't consider is at West Ham, this is why I think Maguire gets exposed, is they play a much higher line. And I don't mm. think it sort of suits players like Maguire and Phil Jones. Whereas in our well, side, and same with Maguire, if I, I would say him, is because remember, we're not going to play like that. They would I remember when <laughs> Maguire signed for United. I remember Paul Merson, everyone laughed at him when he said it, but he said 85 million for Maguire is a, is is laughable because when he plays for England, he played in the back three. He never gets exposed. At United, he's going to play in the back two. He's going to get exposed. And he has. And I, I do feel sorry for Maguire sometimes. I feel he gets a little bit more stick than he deserves. And I think that is because he's an England international. But put him in a team like ours, where the pressure's off, he'll thrive. I, 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 I just, I'll be honest with you, mate. I've said this for a long time. I think that club's a mess. Still is a mess. Yeah, we all know that. We all know um, that. Somebody just said that I hate Ben Rama, and you can see the rage in my eyes every time his name gets mentioned. I actually picked him as my most improved player this year. Go and watch that video. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Giving it all away, Nick. Giving it away. So we, <laughs> so so we did just answer your question, Matt Mark Powell. So I'll I'll, I'll tick that off because we we answered that for you. So the answer is yeah. yes, I would. People, <laughs> it was so funny seeing the reactions. Right, it was half people thought I was off my head, and half people agreeing with me. Some people were like, yeah, yeah. So it was so divisive that was. Yeah, football's. It's because Phil Jones gets a bad rap, doesn't he? Like he's, yeah. he's not. I remember that. Football. What was that game? Um, last season he played and he had a fucking phenomenal game. He came back from injury. Mm. The team was on their ass and he was like the best. And I remember, I, I remember that game because I remember United fans praised him because they said that he looked like the only player on the pitch that actually wanted to win that game. Yeah. 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 And and the funny thing is, I don't think he had been out for that long. Like he, the whole time he weren't in the side, Dan, he wasn't injured. They just did not no. pick him. No. You know, he come back from that injury and just trained and trained and trained. And again, it's a player with the right attitude. And, and we know that's what pla the type of player Moyes likes. He likes people with the right attitude. And as we said, as you guys said, he played that game and he stood up to be counted when other players around him with more high profile um, egos and on massive more money than he is, they hid. I think you know, sometimes that's, that's a difference players... in the player. Players just need a break in their career and they just need to find that right football club. And and you never know, you know, I would honestly I would I would take him. As I said, I'd prefer Connor Cody because I like Connor Cody. I do rate him a lot. But whether that'll happen, I don't know. Yeah. But we definitely need um, another centre back in and obviously a left back. So there was some comments I want to I want to get to talk about Vlasic. Um so I don't know if you want to quick knock the knock these. Uh, comments at and then because I, I think there's a very interesting conversation to be had about what happens with Vlasic now and, and, and there's been some news about that um, so would you take Alex Tellez off United as a left back got to be better than Krez but the thing is I want someone that's a clear upgrade on Krez. Is, he, well, is want... he still there or did he join someone else alone or am I thinking of another Man United defender yeah I hadn't heard about him leaving mm -hmm. I think at Man United, someone, yeah, it might not be him, but I see yesterday on Sky Sports News that at Man United, someone, Man United defender's gone somewhere. I think that's else. a position well, we need to invest money in and not find like a loan or a cheap. I think we need to really get quality. Um, uh, Hayden Taylor, 179 Super Chat. Thank you very much, mate. We'll connect by Sunday and train tomorrow. I very much doubt you. I don't, I don't even know if he's registered in time. So it's very unlikely he'll play Sunday. Um, yeah, I mean, but, it, it, it depends when they got the paperwork through. If the paperwork were through, I think, I'm quite sure it's midday on the Friday. Yeah. It, I don't even, know why it has to be midday on Friday. Because yeah. the games start on... Yeah, it's because the Premier League starts tonight, so it has to be like eight hours before, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's not our fucking fault. It should be on Saturday. No. But, but the thing is, time, as Ryan said earlier, though, regardless, Moyes does like to slow burn players, yeah. you know, bring we, them we, in. We, anyway, we'll probably so. see him around January time. <laughs> <laughs> this is time we, for the FA Cup. Yeah, we, we did discuss this the other day yeah. and, and, you know, in, in what we think. I think we discussed it on the podcast, Nick, that we would have started 11 for for Sunday. So, yeah. Won't change. Won't it be the same? Yeah. yeah, and then he's just said there, Tellez has gone to Seville. I knew, I knew, um, yeah. come on, okay, so, yeah. And yeah, I thought it was him. Um, uh, the other, the other, so this one here, uh, Evan agreed a 20% sell on fee. There you go. The, uh, <laughs> apparently, Mike Dean's VAR for yeah, Sunday. And I think yeah. we've got, have we got Oliver? 
as referee? Do you know what? I'll tell you what. Even though he's retired, he's on VAR, it's still going to be the Mike Dean show. I can imagine him when a VAR decision comes up. He comes up in the middle of the pitch, all smoke and mirrors and everything, and he, he comes up with, like, Mystic Meg looking into the VAR, the prick. I've got that gif in my I've got that meme in my head. What was it? Is it Ralph Ragnick or something? When he's cheering, he goes, you know, because you hear, you think Mike Dean's retired. You're like, Way! and then you see he's on VR and you're like, ooh, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't think of a worse job than him, uh, than being prime oh. minister. <laughs> um, this one, so we'll probably get to, we'll, we'll do a little preview at yeah, the end. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to save that one for the end, mate. Sorry. But, so we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that, Sean. Stick with us. And we will be covering that. Stay with us, Sean. We're getting on to that, mate. Um, I, see, Steve, I don't think this is particularly true, Steve. They prefer Everton. Ogbonna, Payet, they were in, they both chose us over Everton. I think there's, I think there's been a few. Maybe Obiang might have been another Last one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's been a few players that have been quite <clears> a few <throat> players in recent times. I'll be honest, mate. It, it, like, I, I won't, I won't see. It as they're choosing Everton over West Ham, they're choosing money. They're choosing money. Like at the minute, it seems like Everton seem to be chucking money at people. How I don't know, to be honest. But the thing is with Everton as well. Like when you look at the, they are a big football club and they've got a project coming. Yeah, up with yeah. The, with the new stadium and you know they they've always reminded me of a club like us, proper fans. You know, you know they've got an old fashioned stadium that. It's look Goodison Park as much as the away end is not that great, you know. As a home fan, I bet they love it, and I'd give anything to go back to Upton Park. But you know, they are they are an attraction in that way. But yeah, I, I, most most of the players these days, it's all about money. Yeah. You, you've only got to look at the Lingard situation, Gans and Forest. Yeah. Tells you everything. You oh my to. god! But do you know what? Right, I wasn't. I, I, I didn't really want to mention him again, but the amount of stick that is coming through both on our Twitter and I think on Facebook and stuff about he, him taking 80 grand a week. Oh, and and he believes that, uh, like if they actually believe that they're, they're fucking mental. And, and, it, uh, do you know what? I think it is actually true. He is. He did take 80 grand a week, but he took on a big signing on fee. Yeah. It took a 10 million pound signing on fee, which yeah, bumps out to something like, uh, uh, it, it, it works out at something like fucking, Hundred and sixty so, grand a week, sound like that. So it's the yeah. same thing. You're paying the geezer yeah. a shit it's load a of money. Thing, but he's just, yeah, he's getting most of his wages up front. That's why he only signed a year deal. I, I'm sorry, but if you're a, if you're a fucking Nottingham Forest fan and you truly believe that he joined you for the love and and remembering, you know, the 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 history of fucking Nottingham Forest in the seventies and and loving the club and all of this stuff, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah. But if that if that case weren't, I don't even think he was born when fucking Nottingham Forest was last in the Premier League. No, no, right. no. They, I, they, I don't think. Yeah, no, I'm up here, right? You're you're going you're you're going to a football club that you think is going to be a project and he's up and coming. Yeah, what deal do you sign if you think he's a project and he's up and coming club? Yeah, so trying to find you a deal. Not a fucking criminal boss. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, know I mean? <laughs> you don't you don't go to a football club that your class is a project to go, yeah, I'm signing a one-year deal. You're sitting here, do you know what? I think no. this club's a project. I think he's up and coming. I've committed two to three years of my future we, we at this football all, we club. All know, we all know that he's gone for the money. The pundits know he's gone for money. Nottingham Forest fans, they down know he's gone for money. But yeah. as a Nottingham Forest <laughs> fan, would I be excited? Of course I would. Exactly. As I said, I was the last time they was in the right. Premier League, fucking, we was in school. I was in school. Yeah. I'm 38 now. Yeah. Left school in 2000. Yeah, you you just want them to be a bit a bit more honest about it, you know. Just there's, there's no shame in it. Just admit it. We've had players that have come for the money. It ain't worked out well, but you know that's that's football. It hardly um, ever does. Then it hardly no, ever does. It's it's one of those. Um, but yeah, no, just on the on on Vlasic. So news has come out this week that he's been linked with a move to Torino. Uh, talking about a possible loan, we're we're valuing him at thirty million euros. We're trying, we're hoping to get, which probably won't. Um, so yeah, Amaz Am Mike, I know he's not a fan of Vlasic. He's brought in to make an immediate impact, and he's failed miserably when he's had the opportunities and game time and expensive flop. Ship him out ASAP and take the loss. Jesus, Mikey, that's so harsh. Um, I, you know, I do slightly disagree. I don't know. I mean, look, he played a little bit with Everton when he was a youngster, didn't he? And then he spent, what did we get him from, like the Russian league or something? Mm. Um, I think, you know, and he's, he's Mos 
Moscow, Spike Moscow. Yeah. Think, and, and the thing is, you sometimes, and people say like he's had chances. I think a few sub appearances sporadically or start sporadically, I don't think is, is what you can class as chances. I think sometimes you need to play someone into form. I think you need to play him week to week to week for them oh, to really. Hold get on a minute. Hold on. Let me, t- let me just take this, right? 29 Jaces, if you was a footballer and West Ham offered to pay you £500 a week, but Arsenal offers you 100 k a a week, what would you pick? Be honest. You'd pick Arsenal. <laughs> All right. Is he crying? <laughs> <or> is he... <laughs> well, why is that even a question? If you was a fucking West Ham fan, if it was me, I'd pick fucking Arsenal. A I think, I think, I think what, what, I think... The, the thing the thing that you're looking at there is the fact that what West Ham were offering to pay him probably wasn't a million miles off of what he's getting. But he chose to go there for that bit extra instead of coming to a club where he's going to be having, you know, so long as we get through the playoff round, the possibility of European football and a club that's challenging for the top six. Instead of going somewhere that he's then called the project, or a project... You know, I'm going to take Nicky out because he's making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he's froze. You know, and, 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 and that's what it is. Yeah, of course. Look, as we've said many a time, someone comes along and wants to double the amount of money that you yeah, earn. But the, yeah, but that, job, the thing is, that's, that's a ridiculous statement because the difference between £500 a week and hundred grand a week I, is massive. If it no, was like £75 a week and hundred grand a week. I think you saw in probably like 50 k a week and hundred k a week. Do you know what I mean? Well, not either way, you fucking obviously take they're still double the money. Yeah, it's but Jess, well, in, 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 all right, let's chuck Jesse Lingard into that situation. If I was Jesse Lingard, I'm a millionaire anyway. If it was the difference between 25 grand a week, who's got more ambition? You're coming to the, the sort of peak of your career at the age of 29, you've got one big contract left. You know, he, he obviously ain't he knows full well that he probably won't be at Forest in six months' time. He can actually agree. He can actually agree a, a new like a pre-contract with another football club abroad. So that's probably what his aim is: six months at Forest, get that signed on fee, and then fuck off in the summer abroad. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> I mean, he's going to take the hundred grand, grand a week at Arsenal. <laughs> that apparently they're offering. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, no. Um, <laughs> but no. But... <laughs> Yeah, twenty nine. Nicky thought, uh, Nicky thought about it. And he thought, "Hang on," and he fucked off. <laughs> Nicky yeah. bought an Uber. <laughs> it's like shit. I mean, that's a big difference. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no. It, it, it just just back on um, back on Vlasic. Yeah, I, I don't think he's. It, you can really say a few bits here and there is a chances. Uh, to me, I don't, again, I think Steve Bell. Someone said there that he probably weren't a Moyes signing. Which is why he hasn't got the chances. Um, so I would look if we got the money, I would sell him. If we're not going to get decent money, we might as well keep him for the squad depth. Yeah, That's his first the, season the at West Ham. It's our leave, if we are going to get rid of him, you've got to leave it until the end of the transfer window because we need to bring in people to replace him. We can't be letting him go and not have someone coming because I, I think he could be decent in Europe. You know, yeah. he's, he's that sort of player, but. Leave it and if he's going to leave the club, I think it'll be towards the end of the transfer window. Yeah, it's but then, like, so so you're saying, like, us in terms of signing someone before we sell him rather than use his money to sign someone. What if you sort of know know, if you, if you say, for instance, if if we was going to get, say, I don't know, 20 million for Vlasic. You'd hold that deal off, and then you know you got 20 million to spend on another player. So once that deal was done. It's like the knock-on effect. But, yeah, with Flash, as I said, I'd, I'd probably leave it until the end of the transfer window. Yeah. As you said, he hasn't had a lot of game time. You know, I, at least I can say I was there when he scored for West Ham at Watford. <laughs> one, one and only goal. So, I can take that. I, I just I just don't see the, the, the point in loaning him unless, to me, if I'm loaning him, I want to loan him to a club in England, uh, maybe one of the promoted sides that I think need that position so he can get more experience in the Prem if we want to keep him. But otherwise, well, we want money. And loaning, loaning him to Italy, I think, is going to, is a waste of time and we're going to need if, depth. If we want, and, if we want and, uh, Kostic from Frankfurt, offer the money and maybe offer Vlasic as a part yeah. of the deal as well as a loan or something like that. Yeah, I, I think, think that's a shirt. You, you, you've summed it up there, 
uh, down with what you were saying, you know, if if he's a player that you're looking to keep, keep him in the Premier League. You know, there's, there's no point in sending him abroad, get him in the Premier League to get more Premier League experience. And not only that, if he goes to... Say, yeah, but how much would that wind you up if you're watching week in, week out, doing well for another Premier League club, thinking, why aren't he doing that at West Ham? Why aren't he getting the chances? Because he made, because yeah. as as we said, as we said with with someone like Phil Jones, a fresh fresh club, a fresh set of ideas, you know, gives gives a player yeah. a new lease of life. And I think it would be a bit exciting. Like it would be frustrating because you think he could be doing that with us, but at the same time, you think, well, okay, he's shown he is up to the prem. So when yeah. we do get him back, you know, it, now he, he's it's undeniable. You've got to give him but, a go. You've got to give but him yeah, the other thing yeah. is as well, keep you updated, mate. Everyone thought you went for that medical at Arsenal and hundred grand a week. That's why you <laughs> <laughs> he failed. With 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 loaning Vlasic to another Premier League side, he can't play against this. So no, if he exactly. turns, if he goes to someone, just pulling a team out there like Brentford, yeah, and does really well for them, and they beat teams that are chasing Around. us. Down, do you know what I mean? It, it benefits us in the long term and the short term. You know, yeah. this, is, this is what I've said about other top clubs who, who loan players to clubs that are uh, a sort of challenging around them. They, they, that player will then have an impact against teams who are chasing that team, but then can't play against them. Yeah, I don't know why we haven't tried that more often. You know, like saying Norwich, we couldn't align a player to Norwich that was maybe on the fringes with us that could have got into their side and got that valuable experience. This is you it. know, I think we're at that level now where we can start to look at that. Yeah, if you've got a player there that you don't think Moyes has got a player, let's use Diop for example. You know, if Moyes sits there and doesn't want to sell Diop, he still sees Diop as potential. Loan him to Fulham. Where he's going to play week in, week out, where he's going to get the game time, and then at the end of the season, you 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 win either way. Well, the only way you lose is if he has a bad season for Fulham. If he has a good season for Fulham, he either gets into your team or you bump up the amount of money that you can get for him on the transfer. You know, if Fulham I mean, are twenty million, million you got to take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was just using him as an example for now. Yeah, no, yeah. I understand what you're saying, and and we've seen players go out on loan and come back better for it but we've also seen players come back from loan and just be just as shit so it's always yeah, a gamble yeah. but I, I still think Vlasic can offer something if given a chance yeah 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 Steve um, Go on, yeah. yeah Steve X says surely we've seen enough of Vlasic now to, to know he's just not cut out for the Premier League Steve just answer me this quickly like just if you hear this just type it in the chat where are you on Ben Rama just answer me that because if, if you think you've seen enough of Vlasic, but you're you're saying Ben Rama can still do it, then you know. The thing is, as well, like with that, is that there's four competitions, so he might not be cut out for the Premier League, but the the cups and Europe, he might be cut out for. And we have to rest. We can't play players in the Premier League and all the league, all the cup games. So you're going to need that's the that's the point of having a squad. And I think Vlasic can. Can be that ploy. He might not thrive in the Premier League, but he might thrive in Europe, which frees up players like Bowen, uh, Antonio that might get a rest because we yeah. might not need him in them early rounds. So yeah, having the opportunity to rotate the squad a bit better. But just for, um... I think um, the thing is, Nick. Quickly, is I see your point you're making, but I think sometimes. You act. You, you, it sounds as if you're suggesting like Ben Rama's this player who's just been this massive flop and hasn't done anything despite being what third for most goal contributions last season. And I think that goes under the radar. But you don't realise, you know, he, he dropped off after that Afcon. But how, you know, influential he was before that. And when you look at it, it's literally like what Bowen, Antonio, Ben Rama. So it's not like he's come in and you know got one two goals or one assist here and there. He's who done... else? Who else would it be? I think what the difference mean? between like who else could could provide? He plays in that position. He plays in a forward position. Fornell should be doing a lot more. And here, for now, for Lanzini in in assists. Right. I'm not saying about work rate because he does work hard for now's, but assist he should be up there. The thing is with Ben Rama, and I think what separates him and why he gets um, like people call him out a bit more, is that Ben Rama tries stuff that other players don't. He will try to take on two or three players, which when it works looks great, but when he loses the ball, it's frustrating. 
but he does the step overs. He tries the little through balls. But then people, for now, sometimes I watch him. He does a lot of running in the games, but he might not touch the ball for 20 minutes. But he gets praised because he, he runs a lot. And that's the difference. You know, we all want to see the flair. We've grown up watching players, especially at Upton Park when we were kids. You watch the players with flares and, and people going back before us with the Devonshires and the Brookings. We all love a player like that. And I'm not saying Ben Rama's anything like them players, but to see players try things, I don't mind it. But it's when he does it two or three times and it doesn't come off. That's the frustration. And if he can just get that out of his game, mm. I think I think he will be a fan's favourite. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I mean, and, and, and someone someone with his skills, with his ilk, gives the ball away far too easily. Far too yeah, easily. But, yeah, he does. But you you know, sometimes <laughs> He could go if he gets the ball and he knocked it backwards straight away. People are moaning about him. Why aren't you taking players on? When he takes players on, it, sometimes it comes off, sometimes it don't. That's just yeah. he, that's just his character. I remember he, Alexis Sanchez, and I'm not comparing him to Alexis Sanchez, but just on that point, Nicky made when he had that fucking season for Arsenal, what 15, 15 16 season, he lost the ball more than any other player, fouled so many takers because he tried more than any other player. But he was one of the up. He was uh, any player in the Premier League. He lost the ball more than anyone, and that's just the, cheese, just mate. just the type of player he is. Chalk but what? And, the, and Ben well, Rama is always yeah. sort of top in assists as well, so he is contributing. He's, yeah. he's doing like his job. He started the season off flying last year, then he got yeah. dropped. The, yeah, the thing is, as well, is is what you're the comparison you're making there, Dan, is that the difference with Sanchez is the team he was in was a lot better than what the team Ben Rama's in. You know, yeah. where, where you're going to create so many chances and you've got players that take them chances. So that when you do lose the ball more often than not, someone else wins the ball back. The problem with Benny is when he plays on that left, if he loses the ball, we're exposed because it's Creswell at left back. But I've seen, yeah, but... The, yeah, that's the I've bit. Seen, I think I've, I've, seen, I've seen Bowen do that plenty of times. Yeah. Try to take players on, lose the ball, but he gets away with it. But but the problem is, right, he gets away with it because his end product's a lot better. Yeah, I, proof, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, I understand that. And and but you know, I just think with Ben Rama, sometimes he is a bit of a scapegoat for the fan base. And look, I like Ben Rama, but he frustrates me as well sometimes. And and I, I yeah. know there is, and we all know there is a, a, a decent player in Ben Rama. And who knows? Let's just see next season. I, I think, think yeah, there's I, I'm not I would fully admit he has room to improve, right? He's not, I'm not oh. saying he's the best thing since sliced bread. And the same way, like, look, Scott and I earlier on last season, you know, we said that Bet Bowen needed to improve his end product and he did. And Bo and so you, there's hope for Ben Rama that he can then go and improve. But I think the way some of our fans sound like is if he's this like useless player who don't contribute anything despite he's not being he's not useless. Uh, but this is the, uh, and I've said this many times, he's not useless, but this is the most frustrating thing. He should be our best player. He's got the ability to be our best player by by a long way, but he'll have you know he'll have one game where he assists two, scores one, and then he'll have ten where he don't do fuck all apart from giving yeah, the ball the, away. The thing is as well, the thing is as well with That's... Ben Rama is that he knows that when he starts after sixty five minutes, whatever he does, he's coming off. And as a player, you know you get you will get frustrated with that, and you think, well, what's the fucking point? Right, right. Yeah. So. Going back on what that other comment I put up a minute ago about what we, me and Dan said about Bowen, I'm now saying the same thing about Ben Rama, right? But you are bang on because there was times when Ben Rama last season, he was a bit quiet in the game, then come into it, come he like he come alive, yeah, and started doing things, and as soon as he'd done that, always took him off. Yeah, I've said I remember there's there's games last season where I sat over London Stadium and I remember him. As you said, he's coming into the game. He's coming in the game. Bowen's not doing nothing. Fournell's not doing nothing. But then they take him off, and you can see the frustration in, in, in him as well. And as as a player, I can understand that frustration because you want to play football. But as Nicky said, that also is impressive. Every player has got no no player is at the. This is what I'm saying. Fournell don't get that criticism. No, Fournell's in that numbers. Like ben Rama is. I think, I think with Fournell, it's because he he gets stuck in and he, and he runs yeah. a lot. Yeah, that, and and that, that's, that's, it's that's, not like Ben Rama's lazy though, is it? He will track back no. and he will put a tackle in. And but that's that's the thing for me. For, for me, Fournell's is one of them players who, with a lot of our fan base, you can't say a bad word against him. 
You know, yeah. it, there was there was many times last season where he got dispossessed on the ball, where he, you know, made mistakes. You know, you've only got to go back to the the, the first leg of the semi final. It was his mistake that cost us the first goal. You know, and but he gets less criticism because of the work rate that he puts in. The thing is, it's like any player. I mean, Skamak has come in. We're all excited seeing play. If he don't score for ten games, what, what's the fan base going to be like? He's yeah, shit. Yeah. He's another hellier. Waste of money. Get him out. Blah blah blah, and all that. It's it's it's, it's football at the end of the day. But look, I still think Ben Rama is going to be an important part of the squad next season. I mm-hmm. really do. Yeah, I and think I, he's and just, and listen, I think I he'll think... be a lot better. I think he'll be a lot better, and there'll be a lot more confident. I think when you yeah. see the way we play at times, I think. You 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 look at the runs that Antonio makes. He doesn't make runs. He doesn't make them. You know what I mean? Like he's 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 very much like he'll fucking pass the ball out to wing, then run to the wing. I've never seen anything like it. To be quite honest with you, for a centre forward. And when you see the way Ben Rama plays, Ben Rama is a very much uh, a feed the the pony sort of player. You know what I mean? He's he's very much a, a, a feed it to the striker with a proper striker in there. He, he may be more confident to to shift the. I think what a lot of the that, that I think you see this in a lot of West Ham's play, yeah. Um, when we're when we're flicking the ball around midfield, we're going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, sideways, sideways, sideways. It's because there's no movement. It's because yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, movement yeah, up, yeah, up yeah. the top. And, and like when you see Ben Rama, maybe yeah. And I'm like I'm I'm trying to fucking d- dismiss my own criticisms of him. Maybe he's not seeing the movement up front. Maybe he's not seeing the run. Maybe he's looking for that. You know, running behind that defender, or, or you know, to do this or do that, and it's not coming, and he's holding the ball onto the. That's why I said earlier. I think he could play better in probably in the number ten role, just behind the striker, because he's that sort of player that he's on. The, he wants to play football on the floor. He doesn't want to go over the top. He wants to play football on the floor. He wants the little one twos, the triangles, the round no, the corners. That's what he was like. And the thing me. is, I think with whether you're frustrated with Ben Rama or you like Ben Rama, I think there's one thing that we can all say is that we all want him to do well. We all mm. want him. Well, of course we yeah. do. If we're playing well, then West Ham are doing well, and we've yeah. got a good player in him. Yeah, but, and that's, no, no, but nobody can tell me that he isn't. Like people are saying, he's, he's too small. He gets pushed off the mate. There was no geezer smaller than Al Berkovich. No one smaller than Al Berkovich. Al, Al Berkovich would fucking ball around. Yeah, football ain't like that no more, is it? Like you get even the bigger players get touched now. They fly away in place where they get a free kick. So you know, yeah. players like Ben Rama are. Uh, a luxury sort of player to have in your team, someone that wants to try to take play players that you know. Look, I'm not even uh, listen. I'm not comparing him with David Silva, but when David Silva played for Man City, the geezer had wing mirrors on. He knew what was coming from behind him. He knew. He knew the turns. They're the sort of players that, and and he wasn't the biggest, was he? He was only about five foot four, something like that. But he's he'd go down as one of the best players that has played in the Premier League. So, you know, it's um. We all want Ben Rama to do well. Of course we do. And we know there is a good player in there because we've seen him do it. We've seen him do it in the championship for Brentford. Yeah. And I think he can take that step up. This is will be his third season at West Ham now. This is the yeah. season now where he has yeah. to take that step, work a lot harder, get in Moise's face and say, look, I'm starting for you. And listen, you're not taking me off unless I want to come off. Yeah. And, and, and that's it, mate. This, this, is his make, this is his make or break season. You know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't come good now, mm. then it's it's time to shift him on. You know, but like you said, I didn't, I didn't see him where he's at Brentford. You know, you can see the videos all you like and the good stuff he does. But like you said, Nick, if if it's if it is the fact of having a natural striker there to give the ball to and feed the ball to, if that improves his game, then that's great. You know, if he's playing on the left wing and like we've seen many a time, Antonio's running into that space. It shortens your options, you know. With, as, with as, we said, as we said the other day, though, Scott, um, on the um prediction thing with Skamaka, he's going to be that player now that if he knocks it out wide, he's going to get in the box, he's not going to drift out wide. No. Many a times last season, we've done that. Antonio would would look up, these players would look up, and there's no one in there. That's why we go backwards and sideways. Now, Skamaka is going to be told, listen, stay in there. Get in the box, you're a striker. That's where strikers should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil Brown says, how many chances do you give Ben Rama? Three seasons. Well, we he's been with us for two seasons. Um, so this is his third season. And oh, I don't give him any chances. The manager gives him chances. It's not down to me. It's down to the manager. If the manager don't think he's good enough, he'd get rid. So, but the thing is, in the two seasons previous, he's been one of our highest assists. 
and yeah. and yeah, he always up there scoring it's, goals and goals as well. He got double figures for goals last season. Yeah, statistically, we've better, better than anyone. So, he's, so statistically, it's, it's, better than anyone. This bar is what I'm saying. When p- people say give him chances, it's acting as if he's fucking come in and scored one goal or got one assist. He's 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 getting double figures. Of course, I think there's ways for him to go and maybe he can do a little bit more in contributing on the pitch rather than, you know, coming in with the goals and that, maybe do a bit more for the team and and, and improve in terms of what he does with the ball and his decision-making. Of course, he can improve. But let's not act like he's just done nothing for the past few seasons. He's scored maybe, some important maybe goals. Maybe with, with Corne coming in now, it will free up Ben Rama to play more central. So you never know. But let's judge yeah. him this season. Let's, he might thrive off of that position. We've seen many players... Look at, do you remember, I know, look, I'm going back a few seasons, but do you remember Stuart Downing? Yeah. When he was yeah. moving to that central role. Yeah. You know, look how he thrived that season. You yeah, know, so yeah. it can happen. Players get moved around and they find that position and they just naturally take to it. So yeah. let's see what happens. But That's it. Got take, on. take a few more comments. Um, going back to the Vlasic thing, Jason said, I'm an Everton fan, was never given a chance with us. Did really well in Russia. The lads got talent, but like any player, needs a run in the side. Yeah, uh, Vlasic in centre attacking midfield. Play, so Vlasic is a cam playing at cam. Graham's going to slap me for saying that word. Um, <laughs> change subject. Sully Perkins scored for Leeds under 23s. Did you guys see much of him? Not really. Only the in the cups and that. that. Uh, Vlasic, Ben Rama, four nails, not good enough. Does four nails lose his place now? I'm, I'm presuming that's with Cornet coming through the door. Uh, Lewis says... Uh, 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 go on, Dan, sorry. <laughs> I'm whizzing through him. Well, he asked a question and you was like, I'm assuming that's with Corne. you like, I'm not going to answer your question. I'm just going to read I it out. I don't think Cornell loses his place because <laughs> he's a favourite of David Moyes. But it now, Fournel is now asked, asked to up his game because there's competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all yeah. you want. Good squads that do things in the game have competition in their squad. And that's all you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and again, um, you know, he, he can play on the wing or, or in the middle. He does play in the middle sometimes as well. So we have a few versatile players anyway. So we have that depth and that versatility. So there is opportunities, but players are, like I say, going to have to really be on top of their game to get in this side, which is exactly what we want. Mm. Yeah. Lewis says, the issue with our attacking midfielders is, is consistency. They can all have a good game, but they have far too many games where they are invisible. Uh, Vlasic needs to play Cam, which Moyes never did, but he looks like he will go out soon. Uh, another one here. Keeps to the feet, Ben Rama will end up back at Brentford. Colin says, I would keep Vlasic over Ben Rama. Wow, uh, that's a both. fucking crazy take. What I take? think Benny Bowen and Samaka would could be lethal pace skill and the wow factor. Uh, sorry, I think Vlasic ain't good enough. Steve says Ben Rama is a great squad player, loses ball quite easily, but some great moments. Great to bring him on with 20 minutes to go. Dave Ammer just says, What has Vlasic done for us? You know, yeah. well, but but what have we done for Vlasic in terms of game? Have we really given him the opportunity? Yeah. You know, uh, Red Five said Ben Rama can't cross or finish his dinner. Good skills, but not good enough in the final. Third. And then that's something to work on, isn't it? Hmm. Like, as we yeah, said, with Bowen last season, it's something he needs to work on as well. Yeah. But we haven't really spoke about Bowen, but Bowen needs to up his game a lot, a bit more this season if he wants to be in that England World Cup squad. He's got a yeah, taste. I, of, I, he's got, I, a taste I, of, he's yeah. got a taste of it for England. But now, yeah. if he wants to be in that World Cup squad, so we'll benefit yeah. from that. Yeah, no. this, this, that's it. Um, Lewis Tucker, Ben Rama is another player whose natural position is behind the striker. Uh, J29, what frustrates me with Ben Rama, as much as I love him, is he doesn't try to tackle the opposing team. He needs to put more effort in tackling and chasing the ball. The thing I for me with that with one, that. that's not he's not in the side to do that. And this this is what I was saying with the comparison Dan said with, with Alexis Sanchez, is that when you've got a team around you of better quality players, you could afford to lose the ball and be that weaker defensive link. Benny can't because we haven't got a world-class team behind him. 
if you get what I'm yeah. meaning by it. I'm not saying the team that Sanchez played in at Arsenal were all world class, but the levels are slightly different to where Arsenal were competing at the time. We're we're climbing that ladder, but we're not at that ladder. And I feel for us, if to have a player that doesn't put that effort in, you know, it affects us a lot more. And as I said, and he does have Chris well behind I, him. I, 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 I've seen him make loads of tackles. How many times have we been there, Scott? We see him lose the ball yeah. and he immediately goes and wins it straight back again. Yeah. But I think again, I think part of the problem is the fact that who's that he's on that left side and we look defensively weak when he's there with Creswell behind him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got two players that aren't the best defenders on that side. You, you need some support. If he had if he had a Sufal behind him, who knows? Different story. Tony Blackwell, Ben Rama needs to be stronger on the ball and in challenges, bring it into his game and we all benefit from him. His levels would be unreal. Uh, a few more. Hey, hold on, I we got nothing else to talk about. We go. I'm getting to that, mate. Don't worry. Uh, four nails left. Benny at ten. Bowen on the right. Samaka in the box. Boys, as good as anything else, in my opinion. Uh, Red five says, did Antonio start on the left wing this season? I think no. with Antonio, Antonio will start up front on on Sunday. There's no doubt about that. But then I think once Skamaka gets into the team as a regular striker number nine, I think we will see Antonio play that side. I really, really? do. I, think I, think, I know he drifts out that side, but he is a right winger. Yeah. Um, I, don't, so I, don't I don't know whether you'd have him over, over Cornet. The, the, the thing is for football players now is that they always play on the opposite, didn't they? Because they like to cut in. So a left winger will play on the right and a right winger will play on the left. It's the, right. I, I don't like that, to be honest. Right. Let's, let's be honest, though. We've all seen what Antonio's like shooting from outside of the Mate, Antonio don't even know what he's doing half the time himself. And that's what confuses <laughs> other teams. That's when he's at his best, when he doesn't know what he's doing. When he has no. to think about things, that's when he can't finish. I'd, I'd rather see him coming in late runs at the right wing back position, yeah. like he used to back, back when uh, he I'll leave off, Scott. I, I know it's right, listen, right back, right. Well, I want to see him nowhere near the, no, where I, the word. No, back I, don't in want it. Right, I don't want him right back, but right midfield, mate. I like I him. Listen, I like him. Right wing back. Every, every team should have an Antonio, someone that would just play where he's told. Really? Give him a pair of gloves, he can goal. He's that sort of player. Um, and yeah, I can maybe see him playing a bit more out on the wing this season. But then again, what a player to bring off the bench with 20 minutes to go after you oh, just yeah, said, I think that's really, knocking, really, really strong. knocking the back Isn't four it? about for 70 odd minutes. And then 20 minutes ago, you bring on a fresh Antonio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Same as Wolves did to us when uh, with Tiore that time when they uh, we had all the ball, couldn't score. And all of a sudden, last 20 minutes, they bring Tiore on and we lose. You know? Yeah, and he's gone in the 94th minute. Yeah. No. What, 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 was, what was the other thing to talk about, Nick? I'm trying because I can't think of what the other news is. What the other? No, I just I'm just bored of tweeting about Ben Rama. We're, we're <laughs> well, about. You spent fucking half hour talking about Lingard the other week. Well, do you want to do you want to move on to ask us anything? Yeah, yeah go on. Yeah, right. So why, why people get their things in? I've got yeah, a couple of things it. here. Uh, Lewis Tucker says. I would love if we got Brozier on loan or loan to buy. Play four two four, a front four of Corne, Brozier, Shemeka, and Bowen. That's a decent attacking front four. That that, um, that right. So here is, we go. But, uh... Hi guys, if you pick two of these three, which a strike, a second striker, a left back, or a centre half, and no Mickey, you can't have all three. So which well, we've which, already got a second striker. Which out, which out of the two would you want? A second striker and a left back, without a shadow of a doubt. We've got centre half; he's just injured. But we've already got a second striker. We've got Skamaka and Antonio okay. now. We've got one. Yeah, I know, but you. I, I know we, we say, "Oh, Antonio's not really a striker," but he's played there for how many years now? All right, then right. A, a third striker and a left back. I wouldn't take another centre back. I really wouldn't. What with all them injuries, with Ogbonna not ready, with Dawson sketchy, with Agued out for three months. No, you wouldn't, because when they're all fit again, you'd have six. No, but this is why. This is, but this is why I wanted Phil Jones on loan because I don't want Phil Jones on loan to be the man. I want a short-term option. No, I, 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 I think do Daw Dawson will be ready. Dawson to chuck himself in front of a fucking bus if he has to to play a game. Um, Oh, Bonner would be ready at some point. You know, he's only got to get game time under his belt. We, we don't know what he's going to come back like though. The still here. Well, I don't, I don't know what the fuck that all them posts were about the other day about him fucking going to Toulouse. But at the minute, he's still here. 
So yeah, but that, he's already said that that wasn't nothing to do with football. That was just personal. People just jumped on it. That's what yeah, happens if you, when you do that in a transfer the, window. Yeah, these players can tweet and do things. And it don't always mean that they want to leave the football club. Mm-hmm. Right. And the next one, uh, the little one here. Richard says, the new film Bullet Train is an amazing scene set to the Engelbert Humperdinck's version of I'm Forever Blind Bubbles. Check it out. Do you know, I do want to watch that. Check that film out. The trailer. Yeah, looks, yeah, I've seen the trailer of that. Kieran, I've seen your question, mate. Who's your number one this season, Feb or Ariola? Ariola. He has to be Ariola. Uh, listen, I love Fabianski. He's been a great servant for West Ham. He's a great goalkeeper, but he's you have to chuck Ariola in there as number one. You just paid money for him. You've bought him in. Ariola wouldn't have signed for us if he knew he was going to be sitting on the bench again. So I know he likes to show loyalty to Fabianski, but you've got to play Ariola. Ariola can be our number one for the next three, four years. You've got to put him in. You have to. Right, question for you then, right? If Ariola starts in the Premier League, is Fabianski your European goalkeeper? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's, that's, that's, it's fair, isn't it? Mm. Ariola, Ariola enjoyed playing in the, the Europa League, but it doesn't come around every week. No. The Premier League's week in, week out. And he has to be our number one. He has to be. You know, Fabianski, he's... He's been a great servant for West Ham. He's been one of the best goalkeepers I've seen play for West Ham. But you just got to move on. And he will still... Listen, you've got two great goalkeepers battling it out for number one. Mm -hmm. Ariola has to be given that chance. Ariola showed what he can do in Europe when he doesn't play week in, week out. Imagine what he can do when he does play week in, week out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you, mate. For me, I think Ariola starts. But for me, he also starts in the Europa Conference League. You know, and, and yeah, Feb- I mean, I, I yeah, I'd play him every week if you could, but you want your best number one in goal for each game. But yeah. it's part of being a goalkeeper, and you got to you got to give your number yeah. two a chance in the cups. Yeah, listen, for me, Fab's still a great keeper, but Ariola, I'm with you. He needs to be number one this season. Really, really does. Hmm. Um. Where's Graham? I hope he's okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's absolutely fine. He's having the time of his life at the minute. Um, he's having his eyebrows waxed. <laughs> yeah. Won't see him for a few months. <laughs> um, Sean says, best X-Men film. Never watched them. Best X-Men film, the first one, I'd say. The very mm-hmm. first. Um yeah, not the one with Vinny. Remember one with Vinny Jones as fucking Juggernaut? I'm oh. the Juggernaut, bitch. Was that, <laughs> that, was, that was number three, the, wasn't it? Number three, yeah. That was I'm awful. the Juggernaut, bitch. Yeah, no, nah, I think the first one. I'm with you. They've all mind. been pretty poor, though, overall. I'm a big X-Men fan, and I've not been a big fan. Uh, Lewis says, why do you think Downs hasn't played much? Is it because he's being eased into the team? I'm worried Moyes has seen something and he doesn't like and won't use him as he was... A recommendation from Warburton. Mm. No, I just, I just think that you know he's young and he stepped up to the Premier League. And I know pre-season ain't Premier League football, but it's different. The training's different. The intensity's different. So it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get in. But as I've said, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him play for West Ham. So, mate, I've, as I said, it's um. The only thing that in, in talking to a Swansea supporter about him is he's got that little hot streak about him where he where he can lose his head a bit that he will Which need way. to be able to but need to curb in the Premier yeah. League. We we listen, know. we're no stranger to players like that at West Ham. No. Yeah, but then um, don't think we get accused over the last couple of seasons of not having too many of them players. Oh yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. We need someone who's gonna put it about, but there's I've seen some of the videos. And he does lose his rag a bit. And sometimes when you're like that in the Premier League, you know what I mean? The championship's a little more lenient than what you get in the Prem. Yeah, you know, and yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, the way he's gone up to a couple of players, if he does that to some of these players in the Premier League, they'll roll around like they've been shot and roll off the pitch, the amount of rolling that some of them like doing. Yeah, but some some people see that as passion and he loves playing football. Oh, mate, I see it as, I see it as passion. I'm just saying that that could be something that he just needs to sort of curb a little. 
you know, you've got you can have that fiery temperament, and we've said before we need that, and we saw that from Deck in that uh, second leg of the the Frankfurt game. You know, we need to have that. You need to have that still, but so you've got to learn when's too far, if you know what I mean. Um, what's your favourite West Ham opening day game you've experienced? Arsenal. Mm, yeah, in recent years, probably Arsenal away. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think like when I was younger. Newcastle was good last season. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, but Arsenal was my favourite because it. it I remember it was a really good what, thing. one I can remember was when we played Man United at Upton Park, and it was David Beckham's first away game after getting sent off in '98 World Cup, and he was nil nil, and he just got booted all over the place. And I always remember the fans having the red cards out and. And uh, I know we didn't win, it was a draw, but it was against Man United. And I just remember it for that moment with like, the hatred towards David Beckham that day. Mm. Dan? Yeah, no, I, I'd say Arsenal is always, always exciting. You know, we rarely ever fucking win up there and it's always nice to smash those scumbags. It's a fucking scum club. All right, and next okay. one, uh, what we got here? Yeah, hold on. Dean says, who would you, your money be on for the first gaffer to get fired this season? I've got two. Lampard. Lampard. I, I, I've said Eddie Howe, I think within 10 games he'll be sacked and Potticino are being at Newcastle. It's a big shot. Yeah, I, I think I think Lampard, I think they'll shit themselves will come like fucking just before January, December time when they're doing shit. And Tell you like, what, though, mate. Brendan, Brendan, Rogers is fucking, Brendan Rogers is hanging by a thread because they've not yeah, signed yeah. anyone. They've just lost... Um, who's out for six months? One of their players. I can't even think of his name now. He's centre-back for them. I can't, I can't think he's gone. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But, yeah, fucking... He, he's hanging on. But I still think Howard get the sack. Yeah, I think I think either how, right, or I think a, a wild card to go first is Ten Hag. <laughs> no, I, I think can't. The, a lot of people saying there about Howe's just signed a new contract today. That just proves that even more off. to me that they're going to give him a nice payoff. They've mm, already, told him, they already told him he's going to lose his job. Here's a little bit of uh, bunts. There didn't, you go. Didn't, didn't they I do think, the same with Steve Bruce? Yeah. They gave him a good deal. Mate, I think they get a good deal Pardew. under um, Thingy first. Before they get yeah. Pardew a, an eight-year contract. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I, I, don't think, think yeah. I don't think Ten Hag is going to be... Ten, Ten Hag would have to do really bad. Like, no, do you know, do, but I don't, I don't think Ten Hag... I don't think they'll sack Ten Hag. They didn't sack fucking Oli Gunnar Oli. fucking Solskjaer. I think he could walk out. Fuck look, yeah, what's going, look at what's going on there already, man. Yeah, but why would he been there for fucking two months. Yeah, but why would yeah, he walk yeah. out? Why? Because it's only Ronaldo that's causing on? the problem. It's only Ronaldo. No, man. There's, there's deep set problems at their, that club, man. There's deep set problems there. Yeah, there's like, deep really, set you problems. Know, like... It's not just Ten Hag. That's been happening for the last 10 years at United. That's no, I know. Under, I know. That's under Van Gaal, Mourinho. You know, it's happened under all their managers. David Moyes. It's just, yeah, I don't think you'll get a sack. You know, good, good question. just going there to try yeah. to... He's just gone in there to try to steady the ship and, and play good football again with the players that he's got. What do you think about... Because obviously they've been trying to get fucking... What's his name? Dijon. Have you heard that Barcelona... I heard that, yeah. You've moved, you've moved, you've moved, you've moved yourself, mate. <laughs> I thought he was doing Chinese dubs. Hello? Hello? Go on, we can hear you now. Yeah, they might. Yeah, they might not be able to register their new signings, Rafinha's, and all of that. No, they've, 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 got, they've really got to try and they've, sell they've registered them all. Nah, that, that's not. Yeah, that's they, not they, what... they they sold half of their studio or quarter of their sh production studio for a hundred million. They've registered them all. What today? Because that story came out today about this. No, this 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 was a couple of days ago. No, I literally read today. Where was it? Listen, I see that Lewandowski's wearing number nine, but they've also got another striker that wears number yeah, nine. Yeah, this so was posted by nine. the Mirror. 5th of <laughs> August. There you go. They've been dealt a blow in the hopes of keeping midfield star Frankie Dijon. And they've been told they could not register any of their new signings until they reduced their financial outgoings. Mate, this is they're about... 10-day deadline for any potential transfer of Dutch 
international Dijon with both. So they've basically got to sell him in 10 days and try and raise some money to register these players according to the mirror today. Yeah, they, I think that Chelsea are after him as well now, aren't they? And, yeah, Chelsea and, Chelsea, and Man United. Chelsea just get business right. done. Look what they've no. done with the uh, Brighton left back. Apparently, yeah. against City, bang, here you go. This, there's the money. That, that, that the club, money. that Barcelona, they what are they going to be like in five years' time? Like, mate, I, I, listen, if I was any other club, I would not do business with them. Did you see Leeds? I see the interview with the Leeds owner. And he was saying, you know, how ashamed he was because he had an agreement with Chelsea, um, but Barcelona came in um, and paid the same and he didn't have any control of it. He wanted to sell to Chelsea and he was sort of hinting about some of the sort of dodginess that's going on mm. over there. And he was yeah. really just upset with how it went down. And Barcelona Listen, will not be a club in three years' time. Yeah. People, they club. won't be around. Yeah, won't surprise me. We we need to, clubs need to start standing up to the teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid who who, who were. No, it's not. It's big. not. It's not clubs like Barcelona and Real Madrid, Scott. Barcelona, right, are fucking hanging on to their existence. It's a fucking government, uh, not government, but the, the the governing body. Yeah. Governing bodies of football that should be stopping them from doing this sort of shit. Yeah, they want to start finding the likes of fucking Derby and Morecambe and all of that sort of thing when they own money. Yet they let fucking Barcelona run around with fucking wads and nuts. But this, and years. So but this fucking, is the problem. It, it's not nothing to do with the clubs not dealing with Barcelona. People will get fucking money out of Barcelona as long as they're offering money. It's the governing bodies of football that is so fucking corrupt. That they let Barcelona run around and owe billions and billions of pounds and owe players wages, yeah. But they, when the likes of fucking who was it went to the wall? Tell me the club that went to the wall. There's, there's been so many. Bert Berry, Berry. There you go, Berry. Berry yeah, owed hundred grand to someone, and they want to fucking nothing. find them twenty points and fucking do this. It's a fucking corrupt system. That that's, that's I different. think I don't think it's down to clubs to that the, these clubs are all in it for fucking each other. They're all in it for money. They're all in yeah. it to fucking do this. It's down to the fans to turn around and go, no, this is not right. This is not right. Yeah, but that's, but that's, that's different, what, what? isn't it? Because like you say about Berry Derby and all that, that's to do with us. That's the FA. Spanish is Spain's totally different. Yeah, but Spain, Spain, Spain only see them two teams. Spain don't see any fields. They're not bothered about any other club apart from them two. What I'm saying is, with what I'm saying within doing business with it is that they should do it at principle where they've got a player who's owed a massive amount of wages, and they're going spending money willy nilly on on signing players and still owning this player owing this player the money that he's rightfully earned playing for the football club. That's mm. what I mean. In clubs shouldn't do business with them. It should be a case that that, that people yeah, should, of course, should of make a stand. Clubs are going to do business with them because Leeds have got what fifty million. Money's They're money. going to do business with them, isn't they? Mm. They're going to take the money. But it, the people need to stand by. For, you know, there needs to be. Yeah, but Leeds ain't going to turn around and say, "Well, no, we don't want fifty million because you owe Dijon but, nineteen million. No, but but Leeds could have done fifty million with Chelsea, as Nicky said. Yeah, but they, Leeds Leeds just sell to the highest bidder. They don't care. No, they they didn't because it was it was Rafinha's choice. Yeah, they the, the geezer said he didn't have any choice. But the funny thing is that David Ordstein or one of the geese, he asked the guy. He said, "Do you think you're going to actually they're going to pay you?" And he was like, "Well, we'll find out on the second of September, and then if not, we'll have a worldwide case." There's actually worry that they're not going to have the money, well, if, and then if they don't pay it, it the then it gets cancelled. But yeah. Dan, did you this, say this, 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 this is the second of September? He this said he's going to find out. Apparently, that must be when the first right. payment's due. But this, so, is, this so, is the thing about these players, right? They're going to this club. They're getting old, signing on fees. They're getting pro promised wages and all that. If Barcelona go to the wall, they get they get to walk away from that. Still get a road money, and go to and get to go wherever they want. Yeah, but there's a lot more behind it because these football clubs will have insurance. So if Barcelona do go to bust, they'll still get paid. Yeah, exactly. they won't get they won't get all up front. But that's what I'm saying. Look, the Spanish football is different. So I'm glad that it's it is like that over here a little way, but not as bad as I mean Barcelona and Real Madrid have been doing it for years. You look at the Galacticos, you go back to the nineties when Real Madrid used to do it. The only difference with Real Madrid is they're owned by the king. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they it's get away with it. Yeah. Atletico Madrid have been doing it recently. 
You know, there's a lot of Spanish. There's a lot, you know, look at Italy. Fucking hell, we've only got to look at what the Italian league's been like over the last 10, 15 years. Juventus went down to, what, two divisions? Mm -hmm. AC Milan, Inter Milan, they've all been, been at it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's shit. And you don't want to see football clubs go out of business. But Barcelona will never go out of business because they'll just do what Rangers done. They'll just yeah, get someone else to take over yeah. them and... and Bring them back up. So, but but going back going back to the original question, who do you reckon is the first manager to get sacked? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I said. I, I mean, we all said. We, we all answered. Did we? Yeah, exactly. we all answered. Did yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I I keep changing my mind. I think how's possible, but also Lampard. But I think Everton may stick with Lampard because they need a bit of stability. Um, they won't sack Lampard. No. Nah. Mark Baker says, do you think Leicester are in trouble? Mm, yes. They've not made no signings. Um, and they've, yeah, I mean, if Madison is rumoured to leave, they've just lost Schmeichel. Um, I can't think, of, I can't fucking think of his name, but someone's injured because I was watching it um, as I was yeah. leaving, they've got Fofana. Fofana's linked with Fofana's a move away. Linked with a move away. Chelsea. So if they're not signing anyone, they're selling players. Then yeah, of course they're they're in trouble. But lesser a steady football club, isn't they? They always always seem to to get through things and and finish. The thing like... is, I I did a show with a Leicester fan. Um, the Pereira, other day that, Pereira, Pereira. That, they, he, he was basically saying the thing is they don't have to sell players they're not in trouble in that they need to sell players it's just that if they want to sign players they need to sell players so they don't need to raise funds to pay off anything or anything like that it's just they need to sell to buy so which, they which, could decide they want to they want to dig their reels in and keep madison and keep fafana and keep tielemans however if they keep, obviously they want to try and move tielemans on because otherwise he goes for free next season they're not going to, they've got an okay, they've got a decent team there, but they can't strengthen it. They can't improve when everyone else is improving. So the chances are they'll go backwards. Um, so I, I think they could have a, a bad season this season. Have you, I think there's something underlying in the Premier League at the minute. I'm seeing, like, for, for, for what you've seen in the last few seasons, I'm seeing far too many players at far too many um, clubs that you would call. You would call key players that are getting let for go for peanuts, like like the likes of Traore. They reckon he's available for five million pounds from Wolves. You know, Schmeichel's just moved from from. I know he's thirty five or whatever, but one million pounds. It's the contracts, yeah. They run their contracts down. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. But I just I, I don't know. I, even when they run their contracts down, I I, I I'm just. I think there's far too cheap. A million pounds is nothing to a football club. It's nothing. It's what they earn. No, but a million like, pounds better than nothing. No, yeah, I know what you're saying, mate. But in the ter in terms of like, would you take a million pounds or would you keep him for another season? I think a million pounds is 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 a no brainer. I, I, I just got a feeling that ain't going on underneath the surface here. I think that we're going to start seeing the the fucking clubs. Uh, they're sort of. The, the effects of COVID, I reckon. Oh, players just—that's what players do now, don't they? they? Just run down their contracts and 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 they go for next to nothing. Like so, Schmeichel's been there eleven years. He's he's, he's done everything. It's, you know, uh, Leicester. Sorry, he's brought them up. You know, he's won the FA Cup. He's won the Premier League. He's won the Charity Shield. He's done well in Europe. You know, he's 35, 36 years old. He's got a good opportunity to go abroad now to play a couple more seasons. So. You know, he goes, I'm sure he goes with all Leicester fans' best wishes. You know, he's just that sort of player. But they do now. Players just run down contracts and their agents say, look, run it down. We'll get a better deal for you. You get more money, sign on fees, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that's just football now. Hmm. Yeah. That is it. It's, it. But it's crazy that, you know, I know what you're saying, a million's better than nothing. But, you know, Schmeichel's still a top goal, goalkeeper. He no, might be a top goalkeeper, Scott, but he might have wanted to move. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. of course. Of course, oh, no, yeah, he's but... good enough to still play in the Prem. Yeah, but, yeah. see, that's the thing for me. Why no other club come in for him if he was available for that sort of money? But maybe Leicester didn't want to sell to a Premier League. But, so we, 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 but we don't know that there wasn't other clubs involved. 
I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. A lot of Premier League clubs would have gone for him if he had the chance. Yeah, like if you, if 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 Schmeichel is available for one million, then surely if you're like Fulham and you're linked with Leno for eight million, then you go. We'll give you fucking two million or three million, Leicester. To, to, you know to I mean? be honest, when when you when you see clubs like City where they have Scott Carson as their third choice goalkeeper, and you've got Schmeichel who's got yeah, but that's, they do that Scott for their English quota. Oh yeah, yeah, but I'm sure because like Chelsea did with Rob Green. But but with with Schmeichel, I'm sure the length of time that he's spent in England as a child and since he's played um, for Leicester and City, I'm, and I'm sure he was born in this country. Does he, he would probably clearly yeah, fight in it's, that English quota? It's, it's, it's easy for us to say that, but Schmeichel ain't going to go on and go and sit there as a third choice goalkeeper. Oh, no, I don't know. Number one, yeah. in, in the team in France, a different yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah. Then you know we're all it's, we're all sitting here speculating what could have, but at the end yeah. of the day, we don't know. No, no, no. I'm just saying it's you know it's probably there probably was opportunities. Um, let's can we do it? Sorry, Scott, I, I, I've yeah. really got to go in, in about ten five minutes. Can we do a quick preview? Yeah, go I on. Don't know if you want to carry on, but if we do a quick preview. Yeah, no, we can. Yeah, we can do that. We'll we carry on. That. You do a quick, do the quick, we'll do a quick preview, and then we'll carry on with the rest of us of anything. So I've got a few stars. So yeah, go on. Go on then. And <laughs> see West Ham at the London Stadium this Sunday, four thirty kickoff. It's the right. opening day of the Premier League for West Ham. Yeah, what are we Prem saying? Premier yeah, League. Last time game, Man City. First time game, Man City. Um. Yeah, it, look, it's going to be a difficult game. We know that. City have let some quality go, but they've brought some quality in. You know, um, Haaland's debut against West Ham. Haaland, Haaland's dad's last ever game in the Premier League, 2001, against West Ham. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> it's a bit iconic, really. But, yeah, um, Look. Sky will be wanking all over that, wouldn't they? Like, yeah, like, it's going to be the Harlem wank fest, and and that's what's going to bring the viewers in. You know, they're all expecting him to to score the winner or score a hat trick or whatever. But listen, last couple of seasons, I've seen West Ham give City a good game, especially last season. We should have won that game. We nearly end up losing it, but we drew two all. Um, I'll, listen, I'll, I'll take a point now and run. Yeah. yeah, yeah, clearly. And the thing is, I look at that game and I, I think not just, you know, quality of the teams aside, I think they're a lot a lot more ready for us than the season. I don't think we're fully ready for the season to start. Um, in our, and, and you look at them, they played a, an intense game in the, in the Community Shield against Liverpool. So I expect them to be fitter. We well, just need to be they smarter. Only played, they only played three se pre season games. They only played three games this preseason. Yeah, I just think when I look at it, that that community shield is probably the closest they'll get to Premier League and, intensity. And I'll be honest, I watched that game last week and I wasn't that impressed with them. I know no, Liverpool, they... listen, Liverpool are a quality team. But I just think City are known for being, they don't get off to, to quick starts in the Premier League. And if you're going to play them, play them the opening day, Whatever happens, happens. You know, we might lose four or five nil. We might win. I am. Um, um, I'll be happy with a point. I, uh, I I've been criticised a bit this season. People look at me as if I'm mad. I think there's a there's a bit of a transition here for for Man City. I, I don't. Yeah, didn't you say they finished third? You've had, you've yeah. Gone. I think I think they might finish third. Yeah, and I I just I just think they've they're completely shifting their um the way they play and it, it, you know it's been successful for the last few years um and i said this on the podcast on on, on tuesday that they are they're shifting from you know this these floating forwards you know and i i just think getting rid of both jesus and uh sterling for them was a mistake to, to you know to to put i know he doesn't get much wrong but you know harland he didn't look fantastic last week. Let's be fair. He didn't look fantastic. Yeah, uh, he didn't look fantastic, but it's his first game against yeah, like, English opposition. Game, and but, people but were me. slagging Nunes off. And yeah, then he went and bagged a hat trick and then he scored last week. You know, people are going to judge Haaland because they see him as this goal scoring machine. And if he doesn't score after 10 seconds, he's shit. That's just, that's yeah. just football. No, I, I know, just, people, I, 
bit of a transition here for, for City. I don't I, think I, don't, last I, time I still before. think I still think they're strong. I think Grealish should uh, be a lot better this season. He'll get more game time. I think Haaland's... Uh, listen, they're used to playing with no number nine last season after Aguero retired. I think Haaland, once he settles in, he'll score goals. They'll create chances. He's got Mares. He's got um, Foden. He's got um, Grealish around him. He's got De Bruyne feeding him. I mean, what more service do you want? I think um, Pep Guardiola's no mug. Like, <coughs> he's the best manager in the world. I don't think he would intentionally go into this season and leave himself short when he has money to spend. I don't think he would go and get rid of Sterling, get rid of Jesus, unless he thought, yeah, we really don't need them. They're surplus to requirements for no, what he's I'm not trying to achieve. Yes, he thinks he is, is he? He's not going to do that. Nobody would. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So he, so that's what I'm saying. But if someone as quality as Pep Guardiola, as a, as a football genius as he is, he's obviously got a plan in mind. There's obviously a reason for it. Um, so I think looking at it, I think a lot of people they they'll probably start slow like they usually do, and people write them off. And then once you once they get because it's it happens every season, they start to get to freaking October, November, and they're flying, and no one can catch them. And I imagine that will be the same this season. I honestly do. Um, but Liverpool, I think it will be close. I think it will be close. And I think Liverpool could could edge it. This could be a good season. But I don't think they'll drop as low as third, Man City. Boys, I've got to go. Yeah, go on, mate. No worries. All right. Yes. That's a prediction. Prediction. Quick. 2-2. Uh, 2-2. Two, two. Two, two, that's a shout. That's an optimistic yeah, I, shout. I think if, if any, I think if any team's gonna sort of drop, then it's more likely gonna be Liverpool than Man City, in my, in my opinion. Um, but look, it's still gonna be as as we said the other day, Scott. Top two is probably gonna be City, Liverpool. You know, battling out for top four will be Spurs, Arsenal are strengthened, Spurs are strengthened, Chelsea are definitely strengthened. You know, United haven't really strengthened. So if there's any position for us to go for this season, it would be going for fifth place, you know, to try yeah, to... Yeah. Because top four, I think, is is sort of out of it. So six, fifth will be, listen, great. But six is where... Six, six or seventh is where we should be aiming to, to be looking at this season. Yeah. If we got seven, like, I, I, you know, I'd love to, obviously, we spoke about season prediction and all that, but I'd love to win that Carabao, or the Carabao, the Europa Conference League, sorry. If we got seventh, even if we got tenth and got the Conference League, I'd be happy. But, um, the, yeah, with that? Sunday, I think, I, th I don't think it's going to be a goal fest. I think it'll be a, a tough game. And I think if Moyes sets up tactically, you know, like he did before, at home, you know, we, where we can frustrate him, but really hit him on the counter-attack, um, and, and cause them some problems. You know, I, I can see it being a good game, and I think if I'm optimistic, I'd go, I'd go one all. I can see Bowen probably scoring, um, and hopefully, I don't think we'll see any new signings in that game. Uh, come on, but um, yeah, still, I think we can give him a tough game, and I think Halland, you know, he, he's going to be up for it. But you know, it's we can frustrate him. You know, he's going to be desperate to score. Get that first goal, you know. I think with Ireland, he's going to be that player that once he adapts to the Premier League, he'll bag goals for fun. He's built for the Premier League. And and that's the thing. And and when you look at the way um, City played last season, the box, the balls they get across the six-yard box and things like that, Haaland will be there on the end of them eventually. Once he gets used to playing with the players around him, you know, you can't read too much into that Liverpool game for me. You know, it, he'll he will he will bag goals. He he'll get over twenty Premier League goals this season without foul. Scott strikers yeah. miss opportunities. Yeah, they miss chances. You yeah. know, but he'll he'll score as you said. He'll score over fifteen goals this season without a doubt. Maybe twenty, maybe twenty five. We don't know. But our, our fitness might not be fully ready on one but i think our concentration has to be there we have to be from the first whistle to the last whistle fully switched on fully focused on see, everything I, that's around I, I can us. see us starting the game well and strong and then when it gets to about 70 minutes i think that's when you'll see us start fading a bit but that's it, it, when it is, yeah you're that's about when to go bring on yeah. like if, as i said earlier i can see skamaka being on the bench 
Uh, I'll be very surprised if he isn't. I think Moyes is, was just saying that. Um, I think yeah. five, even if he's not ready, would you reckon about bringing him on at least like last five or something? Ten. The thing is, if, if you're if you're sit, if we're sitting here questioning the fitness of our usual starting eleven, and then he's coming out and saying that he isn't ready, he isn't fit enough. How unfit is he? Do you know what I mean? Because mm. at, at the end of the day, we there's no way our players now. With the rest that have had probably barring the likes of Rice and Bowen, and maybe Suchek in, in some respect for with the Czech Republic playing in the Nations League, if they're not ready now, they're never going to be ready. Yeah, you I know, think he just means in terms of match fitness and how much preseason he's actually done. The, th the thing is, though, what I'd say about that is that look, he's an, he's naturally fit. He's a naturally fit player. He might yeah. not be match fit, but if he comes on for twenty minutes, adrenaline will get him through them twenty minutes. Yeah. Exactly, and that's it, and that's that's the thing. I just you look at us in recent years against against thing. Look, I've done the research to do the preview, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But our record against City is shocking. You know, we've never beaten him in an opening day fixture in the Premier League. Um, but they've not beaten us in the last, I think, three or four home games. And the last, the last three, ga three home games in all competitions. So that's the two league yeah. games and the League Cup. Yeah, but. Yeah. As you said, we haven't beaten them since. I think no. the last time we beat them was when we beat them two one at Upton Park. Yeah, the, uh, that was it. Still, yeah. under Moyes' second stint, we've always been really competitive with them on the pitch and, compared to Slavin Bilic and Pellegrini. Era. And that's not yeah. only at home; that's away as well. That's yeah, at yeah, the yeah. Had as well that we've given good games. And we've if, only we've only lost by the odd goal. And if you, if you go back to um, if you go back to Moyes' last interview after City, as he said, we've got a lot closer. You know, we, we've gone from getting slapped by these sides to we're competing against Arsenal, we're competing against United, we've beaten Chelsea, we've beaten Liverpool. You know, we're competing. And again, we're competing. We're, we're that little bit level too low to get that win over the line against City. But we're there mm. competing. And I just I just hope people. that we, we carry on our record from last season in scoring in every Premier League home game. So hopefully we've got something to celebrate. Um, Hopefully it's not a consolation goal after being four 0 down or something like that. But yeah. you know, the last season's game against City, I know everyone was up for it because it was Noble's last home game. Um, but yeah, I could see an early goal. I could just see an early goal for us, and, and we're all buzzing, and then they spoil the party near the end or something like we hold on. Yeah, for but ages. listen, like, the first game of the season, you know, even if you lose, you're not too far behind points wise. You're only three points off the top. Whatever, whatever happens, look at it that way, positives. Mm -hmm. But if you if we walk out of that stadium on Sunday and we lose, but we thought, fucking hell, we've given these a game. You know, we're proud of the players today. It's all you can ask for. We're not at City's level, but if we give them a game and we walk out of that stadium and we think, yeah, you know, we've given them a game. We're unlucky now. We deserve to win. We deserve the point or whatever. That's all you can ask from the players. Hmm. Exactly, mate. Exactly. And that, that, is, that is it. The players give their all. As we've always said, if your team plays well and gives its all and you're beaten by the better side, you can take it. Mm. You know, that, that that is that is how I look at it. You know, but yeah. you give up or just roll over. That's what we don't want to see. Yeah. Um, quickly right, speaking about Mark Noble, to, oh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock on the West Ham YouTube channel, the Mark Noble documentary mm -hmm. is out and I can't wait to watch that. It's going to be nice. a good one. All right, here we go. Damn powers. Yeah, I love how you just said, what happened to you? He was going to read Phil Brands. Then he went, nah, sorry, Phil, you've had your chance, mate. No, I thought I took, uh, Phil was, no, I just put some comments up about why we were oh, talking so people about. can read it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah not just for us to read. I'm just seeing what other people are saying in the chat. Well, Nicky's gone. So other than maybe the last game at the bowling, what's your top moments as a West Ham supporter of the, fast, the past 30 years since your first match? So that was obviously aimed at Nicky, but go on, Dan, let's see your one. Cause... Oh, for fuck's sake, you're putting me on the <laughs> spot. Man. Um, top, top, like, best moments. Yeah. It's always hard to just fucking pick one moment out, wouldn't it? I mean, when we got to the FA Cup final, just the fucking, just that mo, just the, the whole, the fucking living around the area. The, the buzz of the fucking people with the posters outside and things like that. You can talk about the um the final at the uh playoff final. Um, you know, the the Sevilla 
game. He said, oh, apart from the last game, up some part, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, moments like that. It's hard. I don't really have like, you know, this is the one definitive moment. And we don't get the glory where we can say, oh, this cup win at this year, you know. it's So it's, it's little moments like that, you know, that you can take. Um, last 30 years, yeah, it's like obviously my first game. Um, playoff finals, winning them, not losing them, but winning them, especially the one at Wembley against Blackpool. Um, beating Tottenham, being the first team to win at their new ground, love that moment. Uh, yeah, it's quite a few. It's more, I've got more highs than lows, even though that sounds mad to say. <laughs> even, games, even games like United at home drawing two all when we was two nil down and Raddy Choi who come on and Dixie yeah. scored the Dixie penalty. Scored, yeah. and, you know, I remember even going, going to the uh the last season at the Bolin, the away wins at Arsenal, City. You know, I wasn't at Liverpool, but Everton that season Everton, being yeah, down yeah. with 14 minutes to go and yeah, there's been so many, but, but yeah, Blackpool, I would say the playoff semi final against Ipswich at Upton Park, mm-hmm. probably one of the greatest games I've ever been to, atmosphere wise. Um, yeah, Old Trafford staying up on the last day when Tevez scored. That was a great moment being there. So, yeah, there's been loads. There's been loads. I just wish there was more cups to talk about, more wins, yeah. more trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we need. Experience. Hopefully, in the next 30 years. Yeah, ask me that question again. In <laughs> and I hope I can say, oh yeah, the three FA Cups, the the European Cup, the European <laughs> run was great as well last season. Seville at home, yeah, um, that was amazing. That was honestly um, unbelievable. That's it. No, uh, Gary, I haven't got any of the West Ham shirts this season. No. Me, me neither. I won't buy them till the end of the season anyway because I'm a tight git like that. Or, or wait till one of these dodgy sites pop up like yeah. MM. Oh, Ian Bill. No, I haven't. I haven't got it. If we beat City on Sunday, I'll go and buy it. <laughs> That's a good shot. My, my my boys will have them, but I, I don't. I never buy the new kit. I wait till the end. Do you know what? Right? I know when the away kit come out, I was dead against it. But since I've seen the players starting wearing it, it actually looks all right. I won't buy it. But it again, actually... I can't remember which one's. The Do you know one? what? I was actually looking on the website today. And the third kit is actually the same as last season's. Is it? It's, 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 I think they're using last season's kit as this season's third kit. Because even in the club shop, it's not half price. It's still the same price. And they mm. advertise it as the third kit on the website. So yeah, because there was no official like uh, re- unveiling, was there, of this nah. is the third kit. And it's like the start of the season this weekend. So surely they would have released something. But I know yeah. there was a lot of rumours that it was going to be white and orange, but... The the, the 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 last season's kit hasn't even been on sale in on Eminem Direct yet, so you know they're holding on. I, to, I, I think they've you know, got. I think West Ham have sort of pulled that relationship with Eminem Direct after the black and gold kit, mate. That 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 was more West Ham's fault for releasing it to them at the time, but I don't I don't think they have. According I to think, what I think, I think that I think with that Eminem Direct jumped the gun a bit. I think yeah. they they was wasn't meant to do that until the end of the season. I mean, I've I've still got that my uh, that black kit or when I got the uh, that discounted one, I was well happy with that. <laughs> I think that was more to do with um, Umbro than anything else. Um, right, moving on to the next one. Beverly Hills Cop Four is being made on Netflix. Does it need a fourth? Not now. I think they've left it too late. I think because it's like 15 years ago when I remember they was talking about it originally, you I was like, yeah, like, but now, you know, what's it gonna be? He's like 60 now or something. What was the oh the third one was in the theme park, wasn't it? Yeah, I love that. that. But that one was the you know what the funny thing is? If you remember like back when like uh, you, know, you had just terrestrial terrestrial telly and they would sort of show the same films. They would always show Beverly Hills Cop 3, rarely yeah. one or two. Always Beverly Hills Cop 3, on. it was always on telly. It was always on like ITV. Um, so that was the one I've seen the most more than any other. It was like always Ghostbusters 2, always Turtles 2. Uh, for some reason, they they showed the sequels more on telly than uh, the others. But I love I love the, the, the franchise, but I think they've left it a bit long, which is kind of what Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Al, Eddie Murphy. Um, 
Yeah. He, he obviously done um, yeah, uh, Coming to America, America too, which wasn't great, but you have to watch it because the nostalgia and that. And we, yeah, as you said, he, he's probably a bit too old to be doing a film like that, but you never know. It might turn out to be a decent film. So yeah, we will watch it because yeah. if, you're, if you're a fan of Eddie Murphy and especially the Beverly Hills Cop films, you will watch it. But yeah, that's really good. Then. Back to football related, Dean Anderson says, which youngster will you be given a chance this year? Hopefully Ashby. Yeah, I'd like to Ashby, see more of Ashby. Coventry, maybe more Coventry in the Cups, maybe in Europe. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm with they're the you. only two, really, aren't they? Yeah, they're the only two we know. You know, you'll probably see, you may see I mean, Chester's as well in the cup. Maybe, maybe but, Baptiste as well. Longello hasn't gone out on loan, has he? I don't know whether I saw someone was interested in taking him on loan, or whether he's gone. He, he's obviously an option at left back. Left back, yeah, yeah. I know Ashby played there. Come on, played there pre-season, didn't he? Did he play there against Luton? I think yeah. he, left, he got man the match in Europe as well, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Longello playing uh, left back. So, mm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'd like to see a lot more of uh, Connor Coventry. Yeah. Ashby's bulked up a bit as well. So I'd like to see more of them, the pair of them, to be honest. I thought Ashby done well, especially against Spurs in the Cup last yeah. season. I thought he was man yeah. the match in that game for us. But yeah. He's got a um, lot of competition. Yeah, that's it. Uh, three rounds with Tyson Fury or 90 minutes up against Julian Dix. I'll probably say 90 minutes up against Julian Dix yeah, because involve me Julian Dix can't minutes. run no more, but Tyson I Fury do, can still run. Uh, three rounds with Fury because I imagine there's a big payday at the end of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so. I mean, if you're talking about Julian Dix in his prime, uh, I'd probably say, yeah, I'd. I'd yeah, I probably I'd, like I'd, to Tyson Fury more. Yeah, I take them. Uh, you know, if you if you're getting a payday against Tyson Fury, a few mil to take do three. Then rounds again, I'd rather get kicked in the leg than punched in the face. To be honest, that's what I'm saying. Now, listen, this will just be me the whole way, right? Like this, and I'll just and then he'll hit me once, and I'll just go down. <laughs> right, God, I'll just take a pull and take the money. Um, so yeah. I remember, like, I remember Julius Francis. You know, obviously Julius Francis. You would have seen in the last couple of months. He was obviously that bouncer at Box Park. Yeah, but not that geezer. Well, years ago when I used to train at the Peacock when I was a kid, he was obviously there as a as a, a professional heavyweight. And I remember him when he was getting ready for his Tyson fight. And I remember him sitting. I mean, my mate Gareth would sit there and we'd talk to him because he was like <laughs> to us. He was like fucking hell. It's Julius Francis. He's fighting Mike Tyson. And I remember him telling us, basically, he was doing it for a payday. He knew he was going in there. He was going to get beat. I think the Daily Mirror sponsored the bottom of his boots because yeah. they knew he was going to get. He, I think he got knocked down about six times in the first two rounds or whatever. But, yeah, it was. Um, he's a nice bloke, Julius Francis. It's a shame, obviously, what happened. But, yeah, listen. Yeah. He gives that geezer well Some deserved. people deserve it. And from what I see in the video, the geezer deserved it. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. Um, moving on to the next one, Lewis Tucker. Boys, do you like the Predators? If so, are you planning to watch the new movie Prey? I love the Predators. I had a blue pair when I played football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like, you know, I like the first one with uh, Jesse Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I never, I don't remember the set. I've seen, like, I remember bits of the second one, but I've not second, watched it. The second as one much was as uh, Danny Glover. Danny Glover, yeah. Um, so like, I haven't seen it in a long time, but apart from that, I just, I don't know, this, the new one, it looks a bit, it's in prehistoric times. I don't know. Like all the other films ain't been that good. So I've, I've mm. gone a bit off the Predators films. I went to see the last one in the cinema. Uh, and it they're they're not cinema Both films crazy. anymore. They're not cinema films. Yeah. No. They're just, they are like DVD fucking yeah. parking bin films now, aren't they? Or movies for men channel. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, next one is who do you think will be given more freedom to go forward on Sunday, Rice or Suchek? Rice, I would say Rice. I think Suchek will be uh, utilized for the set pieces, but I think, in my opinion. I, I, I think we'll use Suchek more further forward. 
attacking this one. You know, to to be that more of an aerial threat in the box. I think Rice will be sort of sacrificed, especially maybe in the first half. We might see Rice a little bit deeper, seeing how the game pans out, just to try and hold that midfield as, as strong as we can. Uh, right, next one. Steve X, would you do a Back to the Future reboot, reboot or leave it alone? Nah, leave it alone. You have to leave it alone. You can't, you can't remake that. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah, like, it would just be shit, wouldn't it? And where would they, what, they go back to, like, they'd probably go back to the 80s, wouldn't they? Nah, like, or imagine they went back to, like, 2002 or something. Be bullshit. Do you think yeah. it's, that's the thing? It was like what was when they come in the second one, they jumped forward to around now, didn't they? 2015, yeah. wasn't it? That was it, 2015. Our things didn't pan out, but yeah, now this there is something I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, you two, you two obviously love same as me, Back to the Future. You have to go and see the stage show, I, honestly, I yeah. it's unbelievable. I, do you know what? A couple of weeks ago, they had four of the actual act, they had Doc Brown now, they had um. Uh, Mayor Wilson, they had there was a couple of other that they had from the film that that turned up for the, the stage show because there's every now and again they swap the uh they put new cast in, didn't they? Mm. So they've got new people, they've got a new bloke playing Martin McFly and and things like that. But you have to go and That's see it. Thing. I always feel like if when I'm if I miss these ones early, I always feel like I'm not getting as good of a cast as what was intended. When, like when I went to the, when I went to see it, right, the, the boat that played. George McFly, the dad. Hmm. Honestly, I felt like I was watching the same George McFly from the film. Crispin it was Glover. Unbelievable. His, his mannerisms, his, it was just so good. And and like it, it was really good. If you if you ever get a chance to go and see it, I, I, I'd recommend it. And if you go during the midweek, sometimes they do specials where tickets are only like £19.85. Mm. So you can yeah, get a good yeah. deal. Like, So I will definitely recommend it 100%. Nice. Yeah, I have to check thinking, that out. Sticking on the movie theme, best Terminator movie. It's got to be T two, isn't it? It's got to be like the, all the like apart from one and two, the others were just a complete waste of time. They've all been shit, and they apart from the first two. But number two, um, yeah, brilliant. Number two is the best one. I did, to be fair, I haven't minded watching the third one. I didn't really enjoy the last one. I enjoyed watching, but it is the second. Second one's the best one. Matt, Matt just said there, what do you, what, 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 how was the new Ghostbusters? I ain't a fan. I, I actually quite liked it. I thought they'd done a good job with the Afterlife film. I really did. I know it's totally different, but if, if you love the old nostalgia of Ghostbusters 1, definitely watch it because you get like, there's a scene at the end. And even when I watch it now, it still gives me goosebumps. It, it was, mm-hmm. I thought they'd done a really good job of it. But so, I see a tweet earlier and I actually saved it because I said it to my mate. And it was about the women's Ghostbusters film. It was a uh, someone's comedy saying this movie was so bad. I saw it on a flight, and people still walked out. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like the women's one went too comedy, yeah, and then this one went not enough comedy. Like, have you have you seen the new one, The Afterlife? No, I haven't. I can't. I don't know if I can. You should watch it, Dan. I well, think you'd be very surprised how much yeah. you'd like it. It is I'll good. Check it out online. Because it it, they use the same music, the same. Yeah. It's it's basically built around Ghostbusters one. They're doing and another all, one, isn't they? As well, they're doing another one. Yeah, because if you watch after when it ends, the credits goes up. It oh, sort of ends on them leading into a second one. But no, I thought yeah. it was really good. I thought they'd done a good job of it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I I have to agree. Yeah, they it, it's it's different. Yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah. Really? What's the point? You've got these these films. Who's going to play Mrs. I bet it's that fucking Tyler Perry bloke who always does it where he he dresses up as an old woman. Like, he always does those films. But hold on. Why do we need it? These films, they exist. They're great films. Just re release those. Robin, we can't. How can you top Robin Williams? Oh, you can't. You can never top Robin Williams as Miss Doubtfire. And why, so why? Yeah. yeah, why try and live up to it? And this this can't be true. Quantum Leap's getting a reboot. 
That Do you know what? Never yeah, Quantum Leap was the show back in the day, mate. Right? So yeah, I love that. They shouldn't. Uh, what, they should uh, never uh, have uh, ended uh, it. Uh, he died last year, didn't he? The um, the actor, not um, Sam um, Beckett, the bloke that played his psychic, the one with oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, he was great. No, do you know what? I, he might be saying a remake shit, but that is something that I think could do with a remake because not enough people actually have got to see it, and I think the concept is really good. Yeah, it's a good idea for a show, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if it was done right, that would be a good one. You know. Yeah, Blade is a Blade reboot as well. I've seen that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was one of my favourite films, the original Blade with Wesley Snipes, one of my favourite all-time films. Blade, and, the original was quality, mate. Yeah, I fucking, I fucking love it. Um, one of honestly, my favourite Wesley Snipes films is uh, Demolition Man. I love that film. Yeah, that's great. That is a fucking that. classic. And uh, Passenger 57 as well. Yeah, yeah. New, New Jack City. Fucking brilliant. Love him in that. Um, well, yeah, you I, know I, what? I, do, do you ever remember that film he done with Woody Harrelson and Jennifer Lopez, Money Train? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good film. But White Men yeah, Can't yeah. Jump brilliant as well. I love that film. Yeah, he's... Um, yeah, he, he he was at, he was fucking. He was crazy. actually in the new Coming to America, wasn't he? He played the dad. Yeah, it's you know what? It's such a shame he went to prison because I thought we lost a lot of good years from Wesley Snipes. I thought he was really such a. You know good what? Friend. I actually, where's that that comment? They should give him a cameo in the new one. This the other day, there's a Winnie the Pooh horror movie coming out. Really? Yeah, there's a lot of horror. I see it the other day because they're doing a new. They're doing another it. They're doing another Insidious. They're doing another Saw. They're doing another... But I actually see... And I thought it was a joke, but they're actually doing a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Yeah, apparently it's gone into the public domain or something now. Winnie the oh, Pooh is man. now... Anyone can use him as a, a in anything. He's so they, they, they didn't hang about. They've made him into a fucking horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> that would be something. Oh, Speaking of horror good. movies... The new Arsenal documentaries out on Prime. <laughs> I tell you what, right? They've made Arteta. They thought they're they're trying to make Arteta look brilliant, but they're making him look like David Brent. Yeah, Dan, here's one for you, mate. Oh yeah, let's. We should do a remake with that. Do a remake of Cockneys versus Zombies. Just keep yeah. my bits in it. Dig out the old coach, you and Jace. Get the yeah. made up one. Wait, where? Right. You know what? I've still got that Venkman jacket somewhere. That, that's a good shot. The oh, I love that's that the baseball beautiful. film, isn't it? Yeah, the baseball player. Yeah, you remember I mean, when he cuts yeah. the tail off him because he's got his number? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I feel like people don't realize actually how versatile Robert De Niro could be because he got cast in so many similar roles. When actually, mm. if you look at a lot of his work, like The Comedian, I think that was a great film. I bet, as uh, much as I love these gangster movies, I think these co comedian films were... King of like, comedy. comedy. I, I nice. love that film. I watched it the other week, Last, Last Vegas. Have you seen that? With, yeah, um, yeah. No, I haven't. Oh, you got to watch it. That's brilliant, that film. It's got Morgan Freeman in yeah. it. Um, Ke oh, Kelvin Klein. Kevin, Kevin Klein. Kevin yeah. Klein. I like um, him. Who's the one that's married to... Oh, what's his name? The one that's married to... Fucking the Welsh bird. Ke uh, Michael, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. And they all Michael Douglas is basically getting married to like this young bird. So they do like a stag do in Vegas. But it's fucking brilliant. But yeah, Very meet the fuckers. Yeah, yeah, he was he was he was good in that. Yeah, I like that. I like meet the meet the parents. So I think that one was the better meet the parents than you have meet mm. the fuckers. Yeah, meet the, parents. Meet, the parents meet, meet, meet the little fuckers weren't that great, but meet the parents was the best one out of them. But uh, yeah, with that all or nothing, did you see that thing where he fucking plays "You'll Never Walk Alone" in the yeah. training grad, and they go and get battered four 0 <laughs> He's think, like David Brent. They're winning like, now. I've just seen the game. They've scored again. They're just getting battered. I'm I'm goal on it. Second one. Where's it? Two 0 Saka yeah. scored. Yeah, but the thing is, like, uh, Palace all over them. They just can't fucking finish. Shocking. That's about right for Palace. Yeah, they need it. They need they need a, a striker. I think they need someone who can finish because some of the chances they missed have been awful, and they've been completely battering Arsenal since going one nil down. And all that happens is run a play, they go down, and Saka scores. Who's that? Who does that remind you of playing against Arsenal? No, Dan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Jammy fuckers. Scum yeah. club. 
I think like this this year was the only year they actually deserved to beat us, and we gave them both penalty goals. Really, think they deserve a big dragon? Yeah, because we were bad. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, Scott? Before we uh, uh no, on? mate. I think that's it. Yeah, my mouth is really dry. I need to I need to get a drink. Yeah, I think we, yeah, I think we can wrap it up there. That's why I done. Um, I done myself. I had a pint of Jack Daniels and Coke. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, fucking yeah. Like no, nah, nah, I think it was a good one. I think it was a good show. Um, just slightly. Like, was... Sorry, Dan. I just got to bring it. Dean saying best gangster movie. Mine is Love on a Bay. Ryan knows what I'm on about. Classic. He's, he's Classic he's, British, he's, British gangster comedy. There. And the thing is, it's not even meant to be a comedy. It's just British humour. Love that film. Love he's, it. He's, he's he's pushed your buttons there for that one. I love <laughs> it. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna. I've got. I'm on my own tomorrow because my wife's out. So I'm gonna have a little catch up day, and I think I might actually watch Love on a Bay tomorrow. I ain't seen that film for a few years now. Denise found out, and with a cucumber. I tell you what. Have you ever have you ever had them films where you ain't seen them in so long? You watch them, and it's almost like you're watching them for the first time again, or it's been that long. I love that where you you've seen mm. a film, but you you it's been so long you can't remember it, and you're almost watching it again for the mm. first time. So I'll have to pick a few of those out actually. Um, yeah, I might have a few check out a few films myself, <laughs> um, or a few a few series. See what's going on. The new Sandman series is out. Check that out. Oh mate, I've got loads of it. So I ain't even gonna get started, you man. I've got to catch up on. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Oh, I need to catch up on. But sure. um, it's always nice. It's always a, fr- a great Friday night with Pint when we can talk about a new signing. Um, so, so now it's been good and excited for the new season. Uh, you know, see what it brings. And, and for Sunday, win, lose or draw. At the end of the day, let's just see what happens when the transfer window closes. And I think we'll have, we, we, we'll have another good season, I think. Um, so, I hope you're right, mate. And I feel that you may be. Yeah, and it, uh, yeah, it's back to it's back to normal now, isn't it? Fan cams after the game, reviews, previews. Yeah, season's back. We've had our little time off. It's time to crack on. It went on so now. quick. It went so fucking quick. I can't believe it. it. Feels like the season ended just the last week a week ago. Yeah, yeah do you know um, I was only saying that the other day, and it feels like a couple of weeks ago I was walking out of Brighton thinking, oh, that's the end of the season, and now it's it's back, but. I know, man. And that's nine, the, nine months that's of up and downs. And... Are, are we going to beat Brighton this season? Oh, mate. I tell you what, I will celebrate that like a trophy if we beat them. <laughs> if, if we beat them, that's me. I'm I'm ending the season there and I'm not going no more. I'm just finishing on a high. <laughs> yeah, you can't top that. You can't. You, can't, you just can't. I want to batter them. I want to fucking destroy them. Honestly, that's sick it. of it. But um, John, yeah, John's put great fine white chat. I hope Nicky sorts himself out. Yeah, <laughs> we, we all hope he sorts himself out, mate. He, he, unfortunately, Nicky's not really good at disguising when he's tired. Hmm. Yeah, I know, isn't it? he's fucking yawning for him. He yeah. needs the, he needs some pro plus. That's what he needs. He's 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 working very very unusual hours. So he's got to sort, yeah, but... sort that out, man. Yeah. That's yeah, get out. <laughs> That's not good for you. Not good yeah. for your health. Um. So, but yeah, no. Like it's been a been a great show. Thanks for everyone who's watching for all your comments and uh, obviously the ones that got the questions in and and that we didn't get round to. We do apologize, but keep coming back. Keep asking questions. We will. You will have your time. You will have your moment. Just like West Ham will have our moment this season. Uh, so do go and check out the uh, season prediction that went up today with uh, Nikki, Ryan and Scott. Uh, Nikki said to me about doing some sort of separate one. Maybe I'll do a little short thing or something um, so everyone can laugh at me at the end of the season. Um, <laughs> but um, and then, yeah, all the content will be out for the uh, Man City game. Scott's preview will be up tomorrow. So yes, then. I'll send it over to you. Well, I'll film it after this. I'm all, I've got, got to film it. Shit. Let's, let's wrap this up so poor Scott can film yeah. it and go to bed. <laughs> all, all, my, all my gears are out. I've just got to set it up and film it. So, um, right. Yeah. Scott, just yeah. you know, when you, you spoke about the city game a little while ago, just click that bit out. And <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. Save yourself some time, Scott. <laughs> That's it. 
so brilliant yeah leave your likes if you're watching this back leave a comment subscribe and we'll see you next time one thing left to say come on you irons come, come on you irons